Now, before starting, I would like to tell you what all we will be looking at in this series. Okay. So, we, what we would be looking in this series would be. Let me close this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will be looking at HTML. We will be looking at CSS. We will be looking at JavaScript. And we will be looking at uh, React.js. We will be looking at Node.js and we will be looking at Express.js. Okay. So, and well, yes. We are also looking at MongoDB. Okay. So, yeah, this is all what uh, we are going to, we are going to be having here. Okay. Hmm. Now, you might be wondering what all these are, like what did I just, you know, say okay so you don't have to worry much about it in the beginning all right we will you know start from the very basics from the very scratch you will start with html then you go to css then you go to javascript and then you go to react.js and as soon as you hit react these are basically uh you know essential languages and framework to learn front-end web dev okay Cool. Now, what does front end exactly means? Front end exactly means what you see on the web. Okay. I mean, whatever you see on the web, that is front end. And Node.js, Express, and MongoDB, these, these you know, comprises of back end. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, let me just, you know, complete it. Back end. Okay, now this is what you know. You submit a form, or you know, um, like if you look at Amazon, you submit a purchase, or you know, you buy something. Then how that detail is tracked? That detail is tracked using putting all these things in the server. And how do we do that? Using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. Okay, so that is it. So now let's start with the very first lecture. Let's Okay, now we would learn how you know web works exactly. Okay, so um, if I ask you what is internet, so the very basic definition is internet is network. Okay, network of networks okay now what does this exactly means it means that um i have this box okay i have this another box i have this another box and i have this another box these boxes are exactly called servers okay and these you know contain different uh what do i say okay it uh, basically contains um web pages or you can say the websites all right and all these are you know interconnected this connected to this this connected to this this might be connected to this this might be connected to this, this might be connected to this and this might be connected to this like this so this whole web this is called internet it is basically network of networks okay i hope this was clear to you okay now my second question to you is how exactly do you uh, access internet okay this is a very basic question i mean everyone has access internet i mean you are seeing this thing on youtube so you, that means you have an access to internet and you'll be surfing on the webs and other stuff as well okay so internet is you know basically accessed using web browsers okay now might be wondering what is a web browser right so i guess you might be having Chrome on your website or you know Safari or Brave or anything like that. These are called web browsers. 
Chrome, Safari, Brave, and even Firefox. Right? These are called web browsers. Okay. You basically, you know, go to these um, and you access the internet over here. Right? Like, see here, I am using um, Google Chrome. So that is my web browser and that is how you access the internet okay now what is you know a web page where okay, you go to chrome you open a website you come across a web page okay so what is a web page now that is my next question now if we talk about what a web page is a web page is nothing but just html css and javascript code which is rendered okay understood i mean uh, you write some code of html CSS, and javascript somewhere not somewhere on your IDE right and this code is basically rendered and that is how what I mean the rendering part is what you see on your web page okay cool now uh, if you have a little basic idea you would be knowing what these three are used for okay so HTML is basically used for structuring of our website okay it gives us a like it is like a skeleton of our web page okay this is used for beautification of our website okay you know to add colors to add fonts and to align objects that is why css is used now we simply going to javascript javascript is basically a functionality it provides a functionality okay what happens suppose if you click a button what would happen there would be some alert okay and if you hover over something like if i hover here see uh something is written there right pen black thickness three so this is all i uh, what how javascript like this is all done by javascript okay now see you cannot use css alone okay if there i mean it is very obvious right you cannot to use javascript alone as well i mean that is also very obvious thing but you can use html always alone right cool so html is a building block of a web page now uh, so in this tutorial we would start with html okay we would you know go what is html and we would look at some of the web pages then we would understand about html tags and you know the forms and everything and in the end we will build an html uh, website okay a simple html website as a project okay cool so first of all before uh, we dive deep into html code i will want you guys to um, see what html is so html basically stands for hypertext markup language okay hmm. so what do you understand by this thing hypertext markup language i mean uh, these are like four chunks of word and what to do with them hmm. okay so we would break this thing into two parts and that's how you would be able to uh, what do i say understand it better okay good so first word is hypertext and second one is markup language okay cool so um what is hypertext okay we would understand what hypertext is actually right so let's open a web browser and look at this website and if you don't know what this is so this is the first website ever created okay 
all right so it was just a worldwide uh, web info and everything you can see these things subject w so what's out there these are like uh in the blue color so these are basically hypertexts all right i mean if i click on any of these suppose i click here i would be redirected to some other page if i click here i would be redirected to some other page i click here i would be redirected to other page um, yeah this okay so basically interlinking this is not open try this soon this is not open as well oh, okay i mean these are very old that's right so many of it may not work very much wrong. okay whatever like you understood uh, what i'm trying to say here right yeah let's go here okay everything is okay so see these are hypertext basically if we click on any of them we will be redirected to some other web page so this is called hypertext okay i hope you understood what is a hypertext right now the other thing comes is markup language what is a markup language hmm. now uh, in the um, old uh, era what used to happen was the book printers like this was a book okay and there was text written by authors like and there was some um, different symbols okay like there was this symbol this used to indicate that the um, uh, letters over which or the words over which this is there has to be in bold okay and suppose somewhat this that means italics so this was uh, given to the publishers to tell them that words you know uh, over which this hovered has to be in bold or words on which this was a word needs to be in italics so these things are called markups okay the i mean some symbols or something which you know tell a word or tell a paragraph or tell a phrase how to look it can look bold it can look italics it you know an interline can be there on it or it can be indicate uh, indented or something or like that okay so similar in similar way we in html also we have something which you know mark up our words or you know like we can tell uh, this letter has to be bold or this has to be emphasized, this has to be italics, this has to be underlined, this has to be in a different color. So all this can be done in HTML as well. So that's why it is called a markup language. Okay, cool. Now you might be wondering how this markup is done in HTML. So this markup is done using tags. Okay. Don't worry if you have never heard about this term, but it is called tags. Okay, good. Hmm. So let's go to our Chrome and let's go to Java point site and let's see what are HTML tags. So HTML tags are like keywords which define that how web browser will format and display the content. Basically, how a web browser will mark up a certain uh, you know content and see how it will look. With the help of a tag, a web browser can distinguish between an HTML content and a simple content. Alright. Now, the rest of the part we would see in another video. And we would be going to look at two of the main tags. One is heading tag. And one is paragraph tag. Okay. Now I will give you a homework. Okay, go search more over what are tags exactly. Okay, look deep into it and basically search for how H or heading tag works and you know how you write it in an um, HTML code and similarly do the same thing for paragraph tag. Okay, 
now don't worry i would obviously be teaching it to you in the next video but it would be better if you go and check it out beforehand so you would be like you know it would be more clear to you and in the previous video we learned about you know what everything we are going to you know look in this video exactly okay i mean in this series exactly and uh, what else did we talk about we talked about what are the different languages and frameworks we would be you know uh, covering in this and we also like talked about a little bit of html and what is html what does it stand for and you know we did the entire anat uh, anatomy of the uh, html all right so in the end uh, we talked about the uh, tags all right I told you that HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So Markup Language we talked about and how Markup Language, I mean how Markup is exactly implied here through tags. Okay, cool. So in this video we are going to look at uh, how basically tag works. Okay. So for that, go to a Chrome browser and open CodePen.io again. Okay? Just write CodePen.io and just go to it. Okay. Cool. And you don't need to sign up or login or anything. You just click on start coding. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, this is my default uh, layout. You can just change your layouts from here like this or like this. Okay. But I prefer to use this one. Good. So, what is this? Okay. Let me tell you. So, these are the uh, code brackets. Here you write your HTML code, your CSS code, your JavaScript code and the same thing it has shown here okay in this white web page okay cool so since we are going to work for html only we'll just you know double click on it and uh, close the css and javascript for the time being so now what uh, we are going to do here is let's 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 do um okay let's go to the this uh, thing okay okay this is the one of the web uh, pages which I found okay I mean I'll share the link with you in the description you might check it from there it is this um, adventure of Sherlock Holmes I guess you might have read it I mean I read it um, when I was a child okay so it was like one of my favorite books okay. so Gutenberg is basically a li online library so we just went for uh, <laughs> my favorite book the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and um, yeah it is the HTML version of it okay so if you look at this part okay so okay i mean you are looking at this part right so my question is how will you you know uh, uh replicate this thing in your uh, web browser okay i mean suppose i just copied this code and I mean pasted it here okay I mean see it is a whole single line right even I have like put the enters here it doesn't matter the this thing is still in one single go okay okay we'll uh, you know uh, do this step by step okay first of all you can see that the adventures of Sherlock Holmes this is you know greater than this I mean this is the you can say heading or this is the title exactly okay so how would you like uh, increase this thing okay for that what you'll do you will uh, I'll just write it first and then I'll tell you okay so this this thing h1 what is this h1 is I mean okay uh, let's go down this uh, these are angular brackets okay these tell that anything inside of them has to be treated as a tag and uh, whatever we write inside tells us like uh, how uh, like what are the modifications we'll do okay cool now uh, angular bracket I mean once we open the tag we have to close the tag as well okay otherwise it will think that the whole content from here till wherever we have has to be undertaken under H1 but that is not the case you only want um, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes to be in you know a little bold so we will just write um, H1 here I mean you have to close it like this okay cool see I mean you can see it right. ok 
Okay, cool. Now what? Okay, I'll just do one thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty much it. Yes. Yeah. But uh, what about what about what about what about if 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 I want buy another line and Arthur Condor in another line, how would I do that? Can you think of it? I mean, if I just if it would have been a word, I word or um, talk, I would just have simply clicked enter, but it's not changing here. Okay, so for that we have a tag called break B R. Okay. Okay, you can see there is a gap between buy and other corner and oil now. That's because of B R. Okay. Now you might be wondering what is H1, what is PR, everything, okay. So the very first thing to become a great coder is help yourself, okay. Now to help yourself, you must be very good at Googling, okay. So just, you know, type headings in HTML and go to the first link. The first link which I opened was W3 Schools, okay. So you can see HTML head are titles or subtitles that you want to display on a web page okay example are heading 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so HTML tags are defined from h1 to h6 okay h1 defines the most important heading or the biggest heading and h6 defines the least important heading or the smallest heading okay and after h6 it doesn't matter you can write h7 and h8 it won't affect our code so this is our code cool now it is browse automatically add some white spaces before and after heading. So that is what happened. Okay, headings are important. Okay, you can read the rest of this set later. And we can check PR tag in HTML again and uh, in go to W3 schools again. And you can see inserts single line breaks in a text uh, which we did here. Okay. Now to make it a little more better, let's write H2 here. Okay. I mean, it is a subtitle. Uh, this is important, but it is a subtitle. Cool, it looks cool. I mean, I can write um, what I can write here H3 and I'll close H3. Okay, okay, and one more important thing which is there. I mean, look at this, it's looking a little bit good better than before okay now one more thing is you can see that br is uh, we have not closed br by okay so basically there are two types of tag one which are closing tag which requires a closing tag as well and one are uh, open tags they don't require a closing tag like br okay we'll talk more about what are closing tags what are the open tags uh, later okay so now uh, i guess um, that was like pretty much it for this video i mean you have to you know um, uh, retain these things okay and just go to the web check for uh, first thing tags what are tags like I told you in the previous video as well but still look at once again then look at uh, heading tag look at the BR tag okay try to replicate this thing which I did without uh, without looking this uh, code thing okay and, and 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 what else yeah and go for uh, go and look for uh, opening tag and uh, closing tags what are they okay cool so we have already uh, covered two videos where we you know talked about the introduction of web development we talked about how internet works and the different languages we are going to use right and uh, then we talked about you know html tags and how do they work okay so in this video we are going to look at anatomy of tags okay so what exactly is a tag okay so suppose simple I write this tag. Okay. Hmm. So basically, this. Um, okay, cool. This whole thing is called a tag. Okay. Now these are basically the L called elements. Okay. This is the content. Okay, this is the closing element and yeah, that is it. 
Okay. This is the whole thing. Okay. Now you might see this as uh, so. What have what used to happen in in the older period? That suppose someone wrote a book and he wrote uh, "Hello World." Okay. Now he wants to you know uh, make the heading bigger. So what he'll do? He'll simply put a squiggly line under it. Okay. So this squiggly line would be interpreted by a interpreter. Okay. I'll just write an int. That means interpreter. Okay. And he will then understand that okay, this line means that I have to you know. Uh, Use hello world as a heading or like print it as a heading. Okay, so similar way, similar thing happens with our web page, where the interpreter is our browser. Okay, cool. So this was the anatomy of this tag. Okay, now uh, let's talk about another tag which we use. br tag okay now i would really appreciate if you remember what br tag uh, do okay so if you remember good if you don't i tell you again but still try to you know um, remember or i mean these are the very basic tags i mean you don't have to google every time to um, you know find the functioning of these okay so okay cool uh, yeah so br tag basically breaks or acts as a enter of a keyboard okay breaks breaks line cool now this is uh, only element okay it do not have a content it do not have a closing element it is it just only have element and this is a tag these tags are called self closing okay the writing is very bad here but still try to manage self closing tags okay now you might be wondering how we you know uh, differentiate or know which tag is a element i mean uh, which tag is a self closing tag or which tag is a you know do need to have a closing uh, tag so what you do you just simply go to dev docs dot io okay go to html go to elements and search for the br tag okay it's here now you go side okay Hmm. And here it might be somewhere. Okay. Okay. Where are we exactly? Okay. Why is it showing button tag here? Hmm. Okay. The documentation is a little wrong. let us run the button tag but okay, let's see if it works okay it is not working okay let's just say br tag opening and close okay let's just search this one okay okay this is stack overflow we won't be needing this let's just write a uh, self closing tag right okay again it's not Okay, not much is written. It should have been here, but since it is the button tag, but let me tell you, like this is how you look at your documentation. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see if we go to heading tag. Here you can see, they see that both starting and ending tags are mandatory. So this is how you learn it. Okay. We're going to look at one more tag called HR tag. Okay, so 
it must have a star tag but must not have an end tag okay hr tag uh, do what exactly it adds the uh, this uh, what do we say this uh, yeah a horizontal line okay so similarly we'll just use hr um hr here right and then uh, we'll use one more hr here okay now you can see that we got two lines okay but but uh, let me show you one thing oh yeah this site um takes few minutes okay here we are okay okay can you see that our line and okay these are the same okay but the documentation has changed of the book as well like it was a different before this but never mind let's look at H attributes okay so what are attributes attributes are basically like see i have uh, created a line here okay but um how to have this double line or different things how to have that we use that through attributes okay like there is no shade and there is size and there is width etc etc suppose i write hr i write size as 3 hmm Okay, why is it not working here? Hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. It's working now. See, the width is different. I mean, the size is different. Its shade is different. So, that is how you use the uh, these things. Okay. Now, the only thing left here is put one more tag called center okay now your task is to check what center is exactly okay and okay we should be having the same thing here as well otherwise it would be um, little messy right okay yeah cool now you can see it looks coffee the other better right now you will uh, now your task is to check how center works okay and you may uh, comment it in the comment section here okay cool so I guess that was the whole anatomy of the tags all right and and what else okay we talked about let's have a quick recap we talked about tags how okay let's go to the whiteboard how a tag looks okay we talked about elements we talked about closing elements we talk about the content then we talk about how it is you know similar to the previous era then we talked about self-closing tags right the br tag then we talked about um documentation which is devdoc.io devdocs.io alright and then we did some figuring of our own and then we talk about attributes so that's all we covered in this video okay so I hope it was clear to you so in the last three videos um, we learned about you know HTML and HTML tags and anatomy of HTML tags right so from this video we would be you know looking forward to you know code in our own uh, what do I say in our own IDs like VS Code or uh, um, other IDs which you I work on but I work on VS Code so I would be like showing you how to do that okay? cool. hmm. so in this video I'm going to look at HTML boilerplate okay? now what is a HTML boilerplate so HTML boilerplate is a template, okay. 
it is a template and it is a necessary template okay uh you know you have to add this html boilerplate for every uh, for like every project you make okay so let me give you an analogy like how this thing works so let's um, look at this um, formal letter format okay so here you know you have you have a like a standard template like name of the sender address date and salutations name definition and salutations from here okay then you write paragraphs and then in the end you like your sensor loop name and signature okay. that is how uh, you write a letter okay similar way we have a standard format of html boilerplate which we work on okay let's open our this thing demo html let's um, okay, to add boilerplate on its own, you just have to add HTML and then click on the HTML file. So this is what we call HTML a boilerplate. Okay. Now we would uh, go to each uh, um, I mean line one by one. To understand what it is all about okay cool. now first is doc type HTML okay so okay let's create a text uh, doc type so uh, doc type uh, it you know indicates what type of content or language you are working on okay okay cool so you can see we have doc type of html i mean this file is to be seen as an HTML document, okay. Nothing else, just an HTML document. So I have to see. This I have to be seen. And um, whenever I write HTML, it is always considered the latest version of it. So latest version is currently HTML5. So that is what it. I mean, whenever compiler compiles this code, it recognizes that okay, this is a HTML5 document, and I have to read it in the similar way. Okay. Cool. Now, what is this HTML? Okay. Okay. So, you can see that we have HTML. So, basically, this is the root starting of our HTML file. Like, uh, whatever HTML uh, file we write, this is the root starting of it. Okay. All the contents inside this, this, and the closing tag of HTML. Uh, would be taken as <coughs> HTML uh, content which would be you know, displayed on the web okay cool now what is this language in this tells us in what language we are basically writing or like for which target or I mean for which audience we're targeting this now you might have seen that many times uh, like there are um, auto voice for visually uh, impaired people so you know to have the correct pronunciation and everything so it should be known like which language it is reading and the web so that's why we uh, specify the language here okay cool now here comes the head part you can tag this is the ending part okay so head is a tag in which uh, we write some things and these things are not uh, visible to a person or to a user okay it is just that head contents helps um, the web to render correctly okay and, uh, and I guess that is 
that is the whole thing of how I mean head works. Okay. Now we have the meta character. Okay. So basically, this is just the character setting of how we will you know use the character. Okay. For this, let's let's do one thing. Let's go here and uh, let's write cassette UTF-8. Okay. So you can see that UTF-8 is a character encoding system. Okay. It lets you represent characters as SKI text, and so on, and Chinese characters. Okay. Now there are other encoding uh, uh, systems as well. Uh, so let's search for it. Encoding HTML. Encoding it. So, so okay, you can see that there are. Uh, Different like uh, UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32, and many others. So that is what uh, Casa do. Okay. So there are other metas. This are like not necessary for you to learn. So you can just skip them. Okay. I mean, if it would be like helpful in the future, I would definitely talk about them. But it is currently not required for the beginner stage, so we won't talk about it. Okay. Now here is the uh, title, okay, I mean, uh, what uh, title exactly is, let me just show you, okay, let's just uh, use this thing, okay, let's simply write google.com, okay, cool, now whatever thing that comes on the tab part, I mean this thing, the logo of Google and Google written. How that is rendered? That is rendered through our title part. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, I hope that is the uh, understood part. Right. Cool. And then we we'll close the uh, head tab. Now comes the body part. So, body is where you would be spending most of your time. This is the part where uh, you write the actual uh, HTML code, okay? And here is like whatever you write would be rendered on the screen. So we talked about H1. So I will write uh, H1 here. Okay, I can write hello world. Okay, then. Uh, here yeah, we can have the let's say my first web page. Then that sounds good. Then after you know doing all this, I might be wondering, okay, we did write the code, we did everything, but how to render this thing? Yeah, that is the main thing. You would click on go live. Okay. Now it could be that it won't. Like go live won't be able to see the mind, you won't be able to see it on your screen. So you have to add the extension for it, okay? Like here is the extensions. So go to extensions and search for live server. Okay. See I have installed it, so you just have to uh, there would be an install button, just click over here and uh, Restart your uh, your code, okay, and you will be able to see the go live button. Now I click on the go. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I guess I understood what is the problem. We have to make a folder. Okay. So let's do one thing. We'll just. Uh, have a folder here called the depth. Okay, and you select the folder and we look at that. Okay. Now here we have html.html. 
we will have HTML code. I told you about everything. We we'll just have map of the page. Okay, and then we would have H1. Hello world. Right. Now let's try about that thing. See it started and we come here. Now you can see hello world, which was written in the body is rendered on the screen. And you can see the title which we wrote here. Um, where we go? Yeah. My first web page is written over here. Cool. So I hope uh boilerplate thing is uh, make you understood it. Fine, okay. And again tell you how to do it. Just write HTML and click on the HTML5 and you would get your uh, get the boilerplate written for you. Okay. Then you may change the character suite if you want, but I won't recommend that because the UTF is the most common and the most used one. You can obviously change the title here and obviously you can write whatever you want to write in the body part. Okay. So in the last uh, few videos we learned about the basics of HTML, right? We learned about how to use tab, we learned about how to you know use HTML on our own ID and open it on our local browser. Right. We also talked about uh, HTML uh, uh, boilerplate. All right. So in this video, um, any you have understood the basics yet uh, to make your own website. Okay. So yeah, I want to you know look at one hands-on project type. Right? Okay, where we'll talk about I mean we'll whatever we have learned until now, and along the way we also learn new concepts of HTML like um, image addition or uh, and what else. Uh, we'll also learn about the myths. We also learn about uh, links, hyperlinks. Okay, so all this and more in the coming videos. Okay, so the question of this video is what are we going to make? So we are going to make a personal website. Okay, so let's open this. Okay, so this is John Kleinberg's uh, personal website. Okay. So he's a university professor at Cornell University. Okay. So this is what uh, he has uh, written till now. Okay. Cool. He won't be going into very deep, but uh, I mean you can add your own details and everything. But uh, okay, we'll see how much we are going to cover here. Okay. So see, you can see that it's strongly in the front page. I'm going to write the John Klingberg's homepage in front of it. You must write a own one. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with HTML. Let's move the we don't need. Okay. So you can write the title. Me, I'm going to write just one Klingberg's home page okay that is all i'm going to do here let's go there okay hmm. you can see it is going to be so that's john okay my bad hmm. let's see okay now it is a plain website we have to have all these details here so let's start with the name you should write your own name here, okay? So let's write. Let's have. Okay, everything is you have to write in the body, right? So let's have H1. You write John Clean Book, okay? Hmm, same. Right now, under it, it's uh, the desk. You know, let's copy this. All right, 
and we are going to have a tag and write the same thing oh yeah this is also a single to do this one okay if uh, you can see or if you can see this thing um and find one thing that it is a little italics right yeah rather than normal so how about italics so let's write italics html indian hmm okay Let's open this. We can see it is in the access element. I can basically mark text that has stress emphasis. Okay, the EM element can be nested with each level of string indicating a great degree of emphasis. All right. Hmm. Okay, then there is I versus EM. So can italicize our text using two tags. One is I, one is EM. So Let's read this and see what it is. Some developers may be confused by how multiple elements seemingly produce similar visual results. We have an entire common example. Okay. Okay. So by default, the visual result is same. However, the semantic meaning is different. The elements basically you now represent stress emphasis of its content. While what I do is simply represent text that is had to be italicized. Okay. So oh, by semantic, we mean that it has a meaning here. Okay, the EM has a stress over something. Well, I just simply okay, I just betray this thing. Okay, so that is all that is written here. Similarly, you can uh, have one more tag, strong also B. Hmm. Basically, strong. What it does is, you can see, it bolds our text. Okay, so strong element can say that its content has strong importance. All right. Hmm. Now we got the same thing. We use strong. Strong element is for content that is of greater importance. Why the element is used for attention text without indicating that it is important. So in a uh, web developer community. Use the strong and em tag more than the rest of the tags. All right, so that is there. Okay, let me close this. We'll go back to here. All right. Hmm. Let's close this. Let's get uh, a week. EM tag here as well. Okay. See, let's see what happened. All right, we got the perfect one. You know, we also italics are also italics. So I'm not going to add more details here. Okay, right. and these are the these three buttons are called happenings. Suppose if I click on all uh, one of them. And we head to another web page. All right, so we will cover this in further videos. All right, so for the time being, we will just copy this much part. All right. Hmm. Let's have a br tag. Let's have a paragraph tag and uh, save this one. Hmm. I mean, it looks quite similar, right? I, mean, I can add other details as well. We will we'll just simply add the details. Hmm. Let's have it here. Okay, we'll have br everywhere. So it will look you know, a little better than before. Let's open the page. Let's see. Oh, okay. This looks the same. I mean, the hyperlink is not there, obviously. But we'll add it, okay? And you can see that there is no gap here. So, what you can do is 
ini simply remove the glass from here. Hmm. Now we'll check. Hmm. Looks quite the same to me. And okay, let's um just copy this whole info from here as well. All right. Hmm. We'll just make it at least a little bit thick. Hmm. Now you can see our um, page till here and this page till here are looking kind of same, right? Now we need one thing. I mean, obviously, we're going to add the learn about our filling, obviously, but till then, we'll just look at okay, this uh, oh, okay. Now we can see that there is a line break you know how to add it at our Indian it's all going to do you can like show all the details uh, you know attribute and everything but since we have talked about it I won't be covering it again so let's just add the HR tag as well hmm Oh, okay, we have not saved it. Let's see. And you can see that we got a line there. In line. Hmm. Okay, this. This much part and this much part is almost the same, right? Hmm, cool. Now we look at there's you know, you can call this a subheading. So let's have a subheading of our own. Let's call it H3. Right, what it was written here, maybe books and teacher. So, right, books. And teaching. Favorite, let's see. Okay. Um, I don't want to do that to be all of it. Obviously. So let's cut it and we paste it here. Let's close this one. Yeah. Mm. Oh, great. Our page is looking much better. Much more identical than this page. Alright, and I mind you that you have to add your own details here. Right, you have to write your own name, you have to write your own uh, designation or whatever you do, and your college is like your degree and your department, then your college address, and then you can write a little something about here so that it is your own personalized page. Okay, then uh, you can have other things, not books and teaching here, obviously. But so we have got books and teaching, which is from the. Okay. Then you can see we have some bullet points here. So I guess uh, this was pretty much it, which I didn't to come over in this video. So in the previous video, we learned about, uh, you know, we just started making our uh, own personal uh, website, uh, right? So we uh, basically, you know, learn about um, putting our learnings of heading tag and uh, paragraph tag. Then we also learned about uh, emphasize and uh, strong tag as well, right? And uh, we talked about the difference between the emphasize tag and uh, um, uh, I mean emphasize tag and italics tag and uh, difference between uh, strong tag and the bold tag right so if uh, I mean I have started the running of this video and this is what we have achieved till now of this page okay mm, okay this looks this looks fine all right now we want to add these points but in bullet points right so how to do that so i would highly recommend you guys to uh, i mean uh, try 
to do this on your own using the Google search and the MDN. But um, I mean, you're always free to you know watch the video. But I would highly recommend if you do it on your own. Otherwise, you can follow me here. So what we are going to write is. Um, unordered list HTML and we'll just write MDN date okay you can see that we got something about the UL so what does UL stand for UL stands for unordered list okay similarly we have another list called OL okay that is order list we look at the order list um, in a while but um, for the timing we'll uh, learn about the ul time okay so you can see that there are different types one is circle one is disk one is a square okay then one is triangle as well but it is not supported by all the browsers okay so very simple example is this okay we use tags like i mean uh, the syntax of having a list is this okay so what it has we add a UL in which we have to provide the list okay then in the li I mean um, the I mean for every uh, list item we enclose it in the uh, li tab all right then we have a little more complex version of this like this you can check it on your own okay then we have different different things okay so before proceeding let's try to have it in our own website so what we just learned we learned that we have to have a ul tag okay then we are going to have the list items now how the list item works uh, we already talked about let's just copy this okay and let's just write it here all right hmm then let's open another li tag and and let's have okay sorry oh uh, yeah let's copy this All right. Okay. Then what? Uh, let's have another light app, and let's copy this part. Okay. I mind you. I'm just copying uh, this. You have to add your own details here. Okay. I mean, uh, it is not necessary that, that you have books and teaching. You can write your hobbies, etc. As well. All right. Hmm. Okay. I guess this is enough. We mean uh, we don't have to add other ones. So you can see. See, I have the bullet points here. All right. Now uh, we saw that there are types as well. So what you can do? You can write type, and you can uh, define the type. Let's try the disk one. Let's see. Okay, the disk is the default one. Let's have circle. Now let's see. Okay, the these are the hollow ones. Okay. Then there's a type um, square as well. Let's see. Okay, so you can see that squares are here. Okay. Hmm. Now what we can do is let's add um, HR tag here and let's save it. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Um, HR tag should not be here. It should be outside this, right? Now let's save it. Now let's see. Hmm. Looks pretty neat. Okay. Now, uh, I'm doing a little bit different from the website. Let's have one thing. Let's have H3 and let's write hobbies. Okay. You can write our hobbies here. And let's save it. Let's see how it looks now. Hmm. It looks good. All right. 
Now, when you go down, you can uh, check the C also part, okay, where there are other uh, HTML elements related to the uh, one which we're viewing. So we can view the OL one, the order list. So order list is uh, elements represent an order list of items, all right. It's like one, two, three, four, five, or A, B, C, or uh, in the Roman numericals. Hmm. All right. Cool. Now what are the types here? A for lower, A for upper, I for uh, low case Roman numerals, and see you can see that default is one but we can have different ones as well okay uh, you can go down and you can see it is the same it is like a similar way which we did the order list we just write order list we enclose it and we write the different types of uh, list items here all right okay then you can check the other parts as well i'll add the link in the description all right, but um, we look at some of it. Let's write li okay, and let's write our hobbies. Okay, since I don't, don't know about uh, uh, John Kleinberg's hobby, I am going to write my own hobbies. <laughs> okay, so okay, wait a minute. We have to write the URL first. Okay, now we'll write li. What we can add in the li here? Okay, my hobbies are uh, reading novels. Right. and what else do I like? I like uh, playing badminton and I also like uh, brewing my own coffee. Okay, now let's see how it looks. Okay, you can see that the numbering is oh, one, two, three, like, like that. Okay, you can obviously change it with the ol type as a you can see that it has changed to abc and then uh, you can have ol type as this let's see one two three that is in the roman numericals you can have uh, the capital roman numericals as well all right and then what else was there okay the capital alphabetical order is also there hmm, cool this looks pretty neat all right let's just add an hr tag here let's save it let's see okay this looks uh pretty nice all right hmm okay that's nice now what else uh do we need to learn about here like we learned about the bullet points we learned about headings, we learned about paragraphs, we learned about the HR tag. Now what else? What else can you see in the website which we have not used here? Okay, I guess um, must have guessed it correctly. We haven't used these links, right? I mean, if I click on this, this would take me to some other page. So these are called um, links, hyperlinks, and we use, um, I mean, uh, we inculcate this in our website through anchor tag all right so i guess uh, we'll talk about the anchor tag uh, later in the video i mean later in the next video so since so for this video i guess the list part was covered and we covered the unordered list and the order list and the different types of both of them okay now you may play with the list and uh, you may check the other attributes of the list and I'll post your description in the box and you can check it from there okay so thank you for watching this video and see you later and so far we have been working on our just give me a minute yeah okay so we are working on our personal website uh, right using HTML and uh, let's see what we have got so far okay <clears throat> so this is the website which we have you know uh, got so far so according to me it looks good okay we learned about you know HR tag and uh, H1 tag the emphasis tag the bold tag strong tag 
we learned about the points and other things as well. Okay, great. Now, uh, another thing which I want you guys to know is let's just go to the home page. As you can see, these um, links, I'd say. If we click on this link, we are taken to some other page. Okay. So, how to have these things? Okay. So, what you can do, you can click on inspect. And then you can see that there is something called A, A tag, and there is some HREF. So we'll talk about what all of these things are. Let's just say anchor tag HTML MDN. Let's go here. And you can see what anchor element is. Anchor element with its HREF uh, attribute creates a hyperlink. Okay web pages file email address location in the same page or anything else a url can address okay now within each a we should indicate the links destination okay it is done through the href tag and then there are attributes which you can you know uh, check on your own although these are not very much important i'd say um there's one called target which we will see later okay so let's rather than just reading let's try and uh, see how it works okay suppose i have to specify this uh, so what will i do i'll just copy this address and i'll try to put it over here okay i just come here uh where was it? Let's just see. It's over Department of Computer Science. Uh, where is it? Okay, this one. So let's just remove it for now. What you'll do? You'll put the anchor tag. Okay. You'll put a href which we just copied. And here you'll have Computer Science. Okay. Now we'll go to our website and see, okay, there's a link which is present here as well. If I click on the link, I would be taken, I would be taken to this page and if I click here, the website is a bit slow. Yeah, why is the website different? I mean, we just copied the same address. Hmm. Okay, it was some um, loading error, but you can see that both websites are same. Okay, in a similar way, let's try put one over information science. Like present here, we'll just you know copy the link. And let's just have the a tag over here let's just close it and let's write href and let's just paste it let's save it and this is what we come up with again uh, i mean you know you got the gist of what we are doing here exactly okay so that is that another thing which i wanted to talk was target okay Target is, you know, where to display the linked URL, okay. It can be in the current browsing context, which is by default. Blank is basically a new top, uh, new tab, okay. So, what does that mean exactly? Let's see. Suppose I put the target as, say, blank. Let's save it. Let's see what we got here now. Okay, it opens in a new tab rather than if I click here, it gets opened in the same tab. So that is what the uh, difference is. Okay. Similar way there is cell, which is the um, current one, uh, current browsing context, which is the default one, which we already saw. Then this is, these two are there, which are not, um, what should I say? 
not very relevant okay cool let us just close this now there is something which is kind of very exciting uh what i'll do i'll have one here i'll write hobby.html okay and here what i'll do from hobbies this part uh, i'll just copy control c uh, sorry control x i'll save it and let's see what our website looks okay it looks like this right uh, and okay okay now what i am going to do is i am going to put an h3 tag which would be saying my hobbies okay now let's see how it looks okay and if i put an anchor tag here i'll say my hobbies okay i'll just uh, remove this part okay and here i just paste whatever was written here now i can have the href as hobbies oh, okay okay now if i go here you can see there's a link if i click over here i would be taken to our new page which was hobbies.html so this is called uh, internal linking of our web pages i mean you can have n number of uh, web pages here and if you want to interlink them you can uh, interlink them via this okay by the internal linking which we just saw okay great so that was all uh, which was to be taught about anchor tag all right so now we have learned how to put the links here which we can see here as well i mean you can put other links as well here here, here everywhere like where you want but i just wanted to give you a gist of it so that was there okay so that was all for this video thank you for watching and see you later web development series and in this video what we are going to do um, we are going to um, learn about the image tag okay so by the name you can figure it out uh, what it is, it is all about it is basically um, inserting our images okay or uh, what can I say embedding our images um, inside our uh, page or web page i would say okay so it is that now we come back here and let's just go img md and html okay and we come to here okay mozilla uh, developer org and i go to here hmm it is a bit slow uh my neck okay but anyways the page uh oh my So img tag is basically image embed element. It basically embeds an image into the document. Okay, then there are you know supported um, formats and other stuff which we won't be needing as such. Alright, so yeah, great works. Now what we can do is uh, this is index.html, right? What we want to do, let's open a folder. 
um, in the desktop let's make a folder of five million image and let's just select this folder and here i'll tell you why we are doing this later but here we'll have our index dot html okay and what we can do is we can first check how to use it so the way how you use it class is not necessary there are two attributes src and alt okay first we will talk about the src attribute i mean it is required one and it contains the path to the image you want to embed now you can either embed the element of i mean the image uh, from uh, like your local desktop or what you can do is you can embed the image from the url of any website suppose i go to um, splash.com and what i'm going to do this is a nice image i'll just pick it i'll just uh, copy um, image address i'm going to do something like img and alt is not uh, we have not looked at it yet so i'll just delete it and in the src i'll just paste this link now if i go live on my website this is what i'm getting looking okay, nice right then you can also set the width and the height of the image as well width let's say 100 pixel and height also as uh, 100 pixel. works now we go back and now I mind you that we don't set the width or height uh, through our HTML for that I already told you for beautifying or for styling we have CSS right so okay we'll just remove them and we'll get the same image back now uh, suppose uh, what I'll do there is this image I'll do what I'll save this image in the what was the folder name image right so i'll just save it here okay and then what i'm going to do you can see that there is this thing what i'll do is just remove this and here i'll try to write premium photo okay this is the local photo which i am having and this is what i get nice great yes so um, that was all about the src tag and then there is something called alt okay so alt basically is an attribute which holds the text description of the image which isn't mandatory but is incredibly useful accessibility so suppose by mistake i used a different url a wrong url you know then what would happen i would not be loaded but then i can like tell the users that okay you cannot load the image that is fine but you can like get an idea of what the image is so suppose this is a flower and a vase okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write alt and i'm going to write flower and vase okay i'll just save it and suppose here uh, i'll just write some gibberish and i save it i go to ash obviously the image path is wrong so it is not loading but it's all text is present there which tells or uh, which gives us an idea of what it is right yeah that. what we are going to learn is uh, we are going to learn about tables all right how a table looks and everything about it okay so let me just show you how a table looks okay suppose this is a table okay I mean data 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 and data okay cool so how do we exactly make a table so let's go to HTML uh, let's go to Chrome and first let's see what we are going to like what we are expect to make so like suppose you have to add a work experience like this okay I mean it cannot be good like this obviously this is um, structured uh, using CSS so still let's let's okay let's do one thing let's just write the code first 
okay let's have h1 okay work experience right hmm let's save it let's just go live for a second okay hmm cool now suppose i have a paragraph or or okay let's do one thing let's have a list okay okay and let's slide 2002 to 2004 sg at xyz okay now let's see how it looks hmm. I mean uh, we can do one thing we can just have ul over here okay yeah okay I mean suppose I just add this and give a gap I mean okay yeah let's save it now let's see hmm cool okay sorry <laughs> my bad yeah and let's write um, another tag of 2003 to 2004 and research intern at ABC let's go and see Hmm. I mean, see, it's not very much aligned. I mean, you can see, right? And how to exactly do that? So that's the question here, right? So uh, let's just do one thing. Let's just uh, remove the UL for now. Okay. Let's go to tables, HTML MDN. We'll just go to the table part. Um, come down and see this this is how simple table is made uh, okay cool but just don't think so it is very simple like that I mean we can have complex tables uh, like this as well all right cool so now let's do one thing let's just go to here and let's just try and write our code table code of our own so just write table okay then uh, okay um, if you go back let's go to the simple one you can see that it there's something called tr and something called td so let me just tell you what tr and td is exactly so see whatever is inside a column is a td and whatever like this single row this is called TR so TR stands for table row and TD stands for table data cool okay so suppose if I write TR that means I have made a single row okay now if I have to write a TD here I'll just write 2002 to 2004 okay then I'll write another TD and I'll write SG at XYZ Let's just say, let's write SG intern at XYZ. Okay, now if I have to make another row, what I'll do, I'll just simply write TR again. Okay, I'll write TD and I'll write uh, something 2005 to 2007, let's suppose, let's say, and then we'll write another TD and uh, we'll do what? Uh, we'll just simply write. Uh, research intern at ABC okay now let's see I mean um, you can see that there is gap here okay um, Okay, suppose I write hmm. 
Hmm. Let's go to attribute. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. 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 Cool. So this is what it is. Hmm. I mean, uh, it's still looking a bit, <clears throat> but I mean, see that these two are aligned, these two are aligned and that's how this looks like a table. Okay. Now one more thing um, which I wanted to talk about here is um, table is basically divided into three parts. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Hmm. So one is called T head. One is called T body. And one is called T foot. Okay. So I can just, you know, copy this stuff. Just this whole part and write in my body. Okay, I'll just save it. And in the head part, what I can write, instead of T, D, I will write TH. Okay. I'll write ears. And in another TH, I'll write work, work, or let's say designation. Okay, let's save it. Let's go to our website and see that it has been bold. This part, uh, the head part. Similarly, the thing goes for the foot part. Now, might be wondering why do we separate this stuff? Why do we separate this stuff? Because sometimes we have to, you know isolate a specific part in our uh, table like suppose i have to isolate this part and customize it using C uh, css which i can do later all right cool now you might be wondering that something like this this i mean they have borders but why don't our code have borders right i mean uh, this is a very generic thing which might be coming to your uh, mind. So let's just go to the attribute and uh, let's read the attributes align, bg color, border, etc. And you can see that there is this uh, icon beside them. So this icon means depris, uh, deprecated. Okay, not for using new websites. So, uh, deprecated exactly what does it exactly mean is that it is outdated and no longer in use all right i mean uh, see first we had floppy disks right but then it got converted into pen drives now right no one uses floppy disks yeah, so what does that mean that I mean, it still does the work, but still we don't use it anymore because we have something more efficient, something better. So we go, we can see to achieve a similar effect, use a CSS property somewhere. Okay. And borders, CSS border, but since we have not learned CSS, we'll try to have a border here. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do? We'll go to table, we'll write border, we'll write one. Okay, let's see the website now. See, we got a border here, All right? Uh, 90s look type border, which is, uh, which was used before, All right? So yeah, so I guess um, that was all for the table part. Uh, so far we have learned a lot about HTML, right? about the basic HTML codes and then we made our own portfolio website and then we learned about 
uh, image tags and lists and everything and now we have come to uh, how to create forms all right in HTML so okay I'll just open my Chrome I have this pic so a form basically looks like this right where you got a first name a last name date of birth I mean these can be anything but you can like type your own things here and uh, click on the submit button and this information gets submitted right so this is what a form is all right so before jumping in what we'll do we'll just write forms html and mdl okay we'll just open this link uh form html element prints a doc Document section containing interactive controls for submitting information like this. All right. Then there are attributes and stuff. You can like read about it and get what it means exactly. All right. And then like there are different things. Then we have some examples and stuff like that. Okay. So let's let's do one thing. Let's go here. And let's write form. I mean, don't need an action as such right now. We'll talk about it later. Now we have created a form. Let's go live. Let's see. Okay, it's empty. What does that mean? So. I mean this just simply means that we got an interactive thing with this all right so you can like think it as what that uh, this tag does is it creates something like this all right that's it there's no information in here as such so how we get I mean uh, these things and these boxes so for that um, we got our name uh, sorry we got two things uh, one is labels okay and one is input all right uh, so these are text basically written for you know addressing a box like this are called labels and these boxes are called um, uh, input input boxes all right so you can have different type of inputs um, let's just go to input here and let's see so there are a lot of input types there are buttons check boxes color date daytime local and whatnot all right so let's just try one thing let's just try and make um, something called label okay i mean the form is not needed this right name here for now okay and then write um input type text all right let's try and save this uh, yeah let us try and save this and let's go to our page again you can see okay we got something here right at least it's something similarly uh what you can have is let's just add a pr tag here cool you can have different labels i mean see the text box is one important and you can see that this button is the another important thing right so let's have let's just remove the label for now let's just write i mean we don't need a label right now let's just write input type uh, button well, let's just remove this input and we can just have a button here let's have value as submit let's just save it and let's just go to web page let's see cool i mean see it's not aligned or anything obviously but 
um, like all the alignment I just told you, we do it using um, CSS. But still, try to see it. It looks something. All right. Cool. Similarly, you can have other input types which you can check on your own. Like there is suppose checkbox. Um, name ID is not required right now. We'll talk about it later. We'll have input as daytime. Another important input I want to talk about is password. Password. Let's save it. Let's go here. Yeah. Uh, we got a um, lot of things, but uh, when the date time is not working. Okay, let's just go here. Let's see. Okay, it's a simple date. Uh, let's go here. Let's just have date here. Okay. Let's try to save it. Let's go here. You can see, you can choose your date from here. You can have the checkbox and see the password box. What's interesting here is, see, the password is encrypted. Alright. So, yeah. So, you can check the input of MDN and you can like have different different types you may check it on your own and see how everything works all right so I guess that was all for um, right now about the forms we'll um, in the next video we'll try and look at um, what do we see we'll uh, make a contact me form all right in the previous video we learned about forms okay let's just chart this thing and let's see what uh, we get here exactly so this is kind of like I told you about the form thing right so this is how it generally looks all right but uh, in the previous video I told you that uh, we are going to you know um, make a form like make an exact uh, like a representable form all right so uh, let's do one thing let's just uh, remove all this okay let's just add this thing all right and now we can uh, make a form okay let's write this h3 and let's say contact me all right uh, let's add an HR tag and let's add no shade and what was for the thickness one? Okay, I don't remember as such, but let's see what we got so far. Okay. Okay, I have written the spelling wrong here. Contact. Okay. Let's do one thing. Let's just change it to H1 okay let's see okay looks better okay let's have the form we have action all right let's have the form okay we got method and an action all right let's have a label which says um, uh, first name okay then we'll have an input here uh, yeah type text let's save it let's see how it looks okay looks a bit uh, better okay now I want you to check one thing required in HTML okay let's go to this link and you can see that required attribute is a boolean attribute to represent it specifies that an input field must be filled out before submitting the form okay so uh, suppose I have I have required written here okay 
and let's have a br tag here for now and let's have a okay my bad input type but submit okay okay now the submit button is here if i try without writing anything if i try to submit it we got this uh, addition that please fill out this form all right cool looks cool now we have another attribute which is important is placeholder uh, it means that sometimes the box have something direct in there to you know tell user what to exactly fill so let's say write your first name okay let's save it let's see now uh, see that there's a placeholder when no text is written now I can write text here okay let's write QWERTY we get it right okay cool now what else we can have let's have another label and write last name for now we'll have input type text and when we'll add a br text here and let's have a placeholder write your last name right and and we'll have it a required field as well okay hmm okay let's go see okay uh, not very great but still I mean it's something right I mean the styling we'll do using CSS and we'll reach there. Let's again have an input of uh, type email. Okay. And we can have a BR tag here. Okay. Okay, we haven't added a label here. Let's just add a label. Uh, email okay okay this works I guess hmm. Hmm, okay this looks good okay and we'll have required and uh, placeholder as write your email all right okay looks good and another thing of this attribute is that it would go through basic validation test of whether we have written the correct email or not okay, what are the basic uh, emails what are they like we at at the rate and dot I mean these two will be the basic validation of an email, right? So let's just go here. Let's write something, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You can see that. Please include an add the rate in, in the email address. And we'll suppose we just add it. Okay. We have to enter a part following this. Add the rate, obviously. Let's write Yahoo for now. Okay. Any other validation? No, that's it. That is all the validation. That is there, right? Okay, cool. Hmm. All right. So, what else can be there? Like in your contact me form, what else can be there? Oh, another thing which can be here is uh, let's write. Uh, your message okay that also works 
okay and the input type here is would be uh, text area okay so let's have text area as well okay input type as other input type what we'll have here is simple text area like this okay we don't want name we don't want id for now okay this column tells us like how wide would be our text area and this rows tell us how long it would be okay see it is like this uh, let's just first of all let's add a br let's save it yeah so you can also like uh, change the width height through this button as well but for the initial boilerplate it should be like this okay okay cool now we talked about that submit button functionality would come through javascript but right also we can have the submit button functionality okay how it would be let's say let's see in the action uh, what will write mail to info and here like mail to would be like whatever mail uh, you want to be get like uh, let's write my email address here first of all okay so this action would do what it would uh, open my mail ID and uh, the I mean the receiver uh, the receiver address would be this all right cool now let's go to this and let's try to submit this okay oh, all right okay I'll just write my name here Shubham Verma like this let's write something and try to submit okay one thing you can see that it is not submitting off even after adding this and everything that this is because we don't have email handler so how to add email handler we'll just go to these three dots we'll go to settings we'll go to privacy and security okay then uh, we'll go to site settings then we go to additional permissions then we go to protocol handles you can uncheck this icon uh, site scan us 200 protocols and we we'll, and you can you know remove this from here all right that is it open your mail id this icon would come here just you know go to it and click on allow done close it now try to submit it uh, it would open my mail id the sender here would be this uh, right okay and uh, it hasn't added the text here i don't know why is that uh, let's check if we have not added anything Okay, we'll have the ENC type as text plane. Okay, we got our. Okay, one more thing. Uh, that is not a thing. I don't see any problem as such. Okay, let's write something. Let's add something. Let's add something. Add the rate something. Add something and let's. Try to submit this. Let's see. Hopefully, it should work now. Hmm. All right. Uh, it says uh, still the there is uh, you know the text here. Why is this happening exactly? Let's go back to our code. Let's check if we are missing something. Hmm. I 
I don't think so. We are missing anything like that. I guess there is some problem with the mail ID right now. All right. So if I get the you know solution for it, I'll add it in the comment box or like whatever the problem would be at this time. I would put it in the comment box. Other than that, this is the required code. All right. So I guess uh, we just understood how to make our uh, basic uh, contact form with the placeholders, with the required fields, with the email field and with the uh, text box. All right. So thank you for watching with this. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello everyone and I welcome you all to another video of our web development series and we have leveled up. All right. So we have you know learned a uh, respectable amount of HTML like you would be required to make any um, you know representable form of a page or uh, you'd be able to do it you know we talked about forms and we talked about tables we talked about lists we talked about you know basic HTML boilerplates and everything all right and there are other things as well which i don't feel necessary but if you want you can look for it i mean iframe is there and some other stuff you can look that on your own all right so from this video we would be starting uh, css all right so what does css stand for css stands for cascading styling sheet all right, let's put it here. Let us create. Okay, cool. Now, what are the reasons you know CSS is used? Why can't we just you know use HTML for the styling? Because see, HTML styling. If you talk about, um, it is not preferred. All right, because see. Because of HTML styling, the alignment gets all messed up. All right, let me write alignment. All right, and sometimes it does not produce the correct uh, result as well. Okay, it messes the layout. Now let's just go quickly and check CSS. It's, uh, MDN docs. All right. So CSS is cascading style sheets. So it is you know basically a style sheet language used to describe the presentation of markup languages. So markup languages include HTML or XML. Okay, and then all other things as well. All right. So currently. Uh, that is all the theory you should be knowing about CSS okay and let's do one thing let's go here and let's see how do we add our you know CSS so let's do one thing let's write style.css and how do we basically link it with our HTML so here you just write Link CSS okay. RL is basically relationship, which is style sheet. Almost all, uh, all right. Then there is uh, hyper reference, which is this styles.css. Okay, cool. Now let's just go to style.css and how do we basically style the things? So just, just you know, let's go. Uh, and see what the web page look like. Okay, this look like this. Good. Now, what if I have to add the background uh, here? What I'll do? I'll simply write background color CSS MDN. All right. I'll just go here. I'll just go here. I'll just check it how we do it. So we use the background color like this. Okay. So 
that is there all right now what we do exactly is uh, see suppose I have to uh, modify the whole area there right so I'll be using a tag there right okay and how do we like exactly use the um, tag thing and everything uh, let's see I go here see this tag is body I'll simply say body and I'll open this thing and I'll write here background color and I got a very nice background color so I'll just write the background color code it's E A F and then I'll write 6 F 6 alright I'll save it we'll go here see background color has been changed and it is looking kind of pretty alright like at least to me it's kind of looking pretty to me alright so that is one thing then uh, you can you know the changes in the h1 as well okay let's do one thing let's add h1 and let's see how do we you know add color in the text i'll just simply say text color css mdn we'll go here we'll see how it works so it's just simply color the color property set the foreground color value of an element text and text decoration set the current color value okay so we'll just come here we'll simply write color and again i got a very nice color which is 66 p f p f okay let's just save it let's see how it works uh, hmm. see the form is already looking kind of pretty right i mean at least to me okay so yeah that is one thing then uh, we can have another thing here as called line that is simply say center and see okay this should have been worked i mean align okay i don't know okay let's just simply say align text css mdn okay it's text align so here we just simply write text align center let's save it let's go let's see see i mean kind of looking very nice right so cool so there's one thing you should be able to very good at google search for css i mean because uh, these properties are like in thousands all right so you won't be able to you know learn about every one of them but you should be able to know like what you want to do like i know about here that i want to align my text somewhere so just simply write align text css right that's what you have to do there so i guess that was it for the introductory video of css uh, so let's just quickly review what we talked about here we talked about CSS, its full form, why don't we use HTML styling over CSS, then we learned about linking CSS style sheet to our HTML, then uh, how basically we style everything. We use the tags like body tag I used, it um, modified body, the h1 tag, it modified h1, like that. Okay. In this video, we are going to look at CSS syntax or you can say anatomy of CSS okay
so in the previous video we learned about how you know you can add css file inside your html file so just to give you a quick recap i'm just going to make one index for html here i'm going to add the okay something is wrong Yeah, it is back. Okay, we added the boilerplate here. Now, uh, what we did, we created an index dot CSS, and in here we'll have uh. Yeah, link CSS, the relationship is style sheet and the HRF is style.css. Okay. Okay, I named it index.css. So let's just change it to index.css. Okay. Now I'll show you how you know CSS syntax is written. I mean I did show you in the previous one, but let's see how like what is the breakage of it so you can say the breakage of css syntax is it is something like selected okay and then inside of it uh, there is property and then there is uh, selection let's say okay and these are all in the curly bracket Now see this selector. This is basically who, like who we need to change. Okay. Property is what. That means okay. We know what like who we need to change exactly, or you can say which. But what inside that selector we need to change. So that is defined by property what and this tells us how much like what you want to change like if you want to you know give it a width how much width do you want to like make it bold how much bold that is told by this selection what is told by the property and who is told by the selector now let's try and uh, implement this a bit. Let's see how it works. So here I'm going to have an H1. Here I'm going to say in the text. And then I'm going to have a P where I'm going to say paragraph text. I go to my index. Here I'll select who or what. I want to change. I want to change H1. Okay. Inside H1, what I want to change? I'll just say, let's say, color. How much or what should be the color here? Yeah, let's say aqua. I'll just save it. I'll go to my index and I'll just click on go live. Okay, why hasn't it been changed? It is index.css and here it is href is also index.css. Let's do one thing, let's say it style.css and here we'll just 
rename it let's hope it works hmm okay that is weird why is it not working like ah uh, okay my bad this dot not supposed to be here okay great i'll like talk about why i did the dot and why it is not needed so basically when you write elements like h1 element or p element you want to you know change we just directly write them as i told you in the previous video but if you like suppose add something called a class here of h1 let's say then if you want to you know um uh, modify this specific class only then you put dot okay it's not relevant right now but just you know telling you i mean this class would come in the future video so don't you know worry about it but anyways we see you know what we change like who we change what inside that we change and by how much we change or what is that we change okay nice similarly you can have the paragraph tag as well let's say color red red looks nice let's see hmm you can increase the font size let's say uh large great so this was you know basically the anatomy of css syntax selector property selection who what how much okay so in the previous video we learned about the anatomy of uh, css uh, right then uh, we talked about you know um, the props the values the selectors and everything uh, and we looked at how website looks let's just go live here Okay, my bad. Uh, it should be HTML. Okay, let's just close that and let's go live now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right. Now, um, in the previous video, we came up with a with a problem, right? So, um, uh, what I wanted was to change the colors of these two decks right i wanted this to be in black and i wanted this to be in uh aqua color but when i use the p here so both of these would get uh the same color so here the confusion arises right what to do now so since Till now we have talked about uh, selectors which are just tags like h1 tag, p tag, right? But now we are going to look at more CSS selectors. Uh, let's just write CSS selectors, let's just go, uh, let's just go to W3 schools. And you can see what are CSS selectors, we already know, but let's read it again. So, uh, it's a selector basically selects the HTML element. You understand, <clears throat> All right? Now there are different type of CSS selectors. Okay, uh, you can divide the CSS selectors into five categories. So there are simple selectors, then there are combinators, pseudo class, pseudo elements, and attributes. Okay. So if you go to combinator selectors, you can see the combinator something that explains the relationship between these selectors. So this would be, I guess, a uh, little too much for you. Okay. So right now we're not going to talk about the combination one. We'll talk it about in the further coming videos. But uh, till then, 
let's just talk about the simple selectors. Regarding the simple selectors, we have only used the uh, tag name. Okay. So the simple CSS selectors, it contains ID and class. Okay. So ID is used by a hashtag sign and class is used by a dot. Okay, we'll talk about how we'll do that. Okay. And then there is a universal selector as well. Okay. And the grouping selectors we talked about and yeah. Okay. Okay. That is cool. That is cool, right? Huh. So let's just head back to our Visual Studio code and let's learn what we just study. So here we'll just write um, ID, okay, and let's just name it Aqua for now. And here we'll have a class which would be named uh, Black for now. Okay. Okay. Now here, what? Uh, we'll do a we'll comment this. So I hope you know what a comment is. So comment is basically a part of the code which is uh, basically not uh, executed or compiled. So it is understood by the compiler that this is just for the documentation purposes and we don't need to compile this. Okay, so it is by forward slash star and then you can have the star again and forward slash. Okay. Okay, that, that looks well. Okay, let's talk about the universal selector first. You open the universal selector, right? Now I'll just save it. I don't know it's another. There's a warning. Okay. Now here I'll simply write uh, font family the font family is basically used for uh, changing the font style so let's just work with this right now okay let's just save it okay that was not the one font style css let's add that okay Okay, 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 okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. We did the same thing here, but uh, it is not working. Let's go here, what style property? Okay, that is a different one on grade. Uh, let's just go back here. We have saved it. Let's uh, just go here. Okay, let's just observe this. Now we'll go back to the game. And I will run this. Uh, what we can have. We have something this, right? Let's save it. Let's go back here. Nothing is happening. Let's. Uh, uh, let's have this okay okay it is still not changing i'm still not sure why is that happening let's just go to the three three schools and all uh, no this one has been one we go here hmm Okay, okay, let's try it for ourselves. Um, let's see that there are different ones. Why are we not having that thing? We haven't done the same thing, right? Okay, let's just try to one, two, one thing. Let's just copy it from here. Let's just paste it here. Okay, 
still not working let's just go to selector back again you can see that universal selector is like this only okay let's just do one thing let's just try to put the color here for now and let's just say a not black let's say blue let's say red let's just go here So if I move this part from here, let's go okay. There you go, this thing is working. Okay, so let's put the color back here as red. Hmm. Our family. Hmm. Let's just try the font family thing again. Or uh, let's just say for italic right now. Okay, I just want to make too much. You can see that italics. You can check the font family thing on your own, on your own system. Maybe my system is lagging on something. Uh, we'll see what it is. All right. So okay, but never mind. Uh, we're talking about things. So let's have one thing here. Uh, let's have the class which was black, right? And here we'll have the color as black. Okay, let's save it. And let's just have ID. And we'll color, we'll have the color as aqua. Let's save it. Let's. Uh, Let's go here. Oh, sorry. Oh, it should be aqua red. Aqua red. What's the problem now? Oh, okay. My bad. Aqua. Let's save it. Okay, you can see that. Oh. Paragraph with IT aqua is colored in aqua and this is in black. So both had the same uh, paragraph tag, but IDs and classes, these are the main selectors. You can you know um, select I mean uh code code snippet and uh, style it style it accordingly, alright. So I guess the simple selectors was all this video had. In the next video, we'll uh, talk about the difference between class and ID. And I welcome you all to another video of our web development series. And in this video, we are going to talk about IDs versus class. Okay. So I hope you remember how we used class. How we use class and how we use ID. Just to give you a quick recap. Uh, we type class, we give it some class name and we use um, dot for that. Okay. And for simple, um, like for ID, we use hashtag ID. Let's just say for now. Okay. Great. Okay, I'll just remove everything from here and I'll remove this class as well. We'll just start afresh. If I go to my index and if I go live, let's see what happens. Okay, simple, nothing, nothing important here. Okay, great. Now, you might think that, okay, ID and class both are like, they have similar functions, right? But remember, they are not the same. And they do not always share the same purpose, okay? If I talk about, uh, where's my star? Okay. Now, what if I talk about IDs? So, first point is that each element can have only one ID. Okay. Suppose this is my header and there are two IDs. Let's say um, sample one, sample two. Sample 1, sample 2. And if I save it, 
and let's just say I write hashtag sample one and hashtag sample two. Yeah, this is how it would work, right? And suppose here I give it font size. 1.5 rem and here i give it color aqua let's say now if i go back to the website and if i refresh see nothing happened why because each element can have only one id so according to our compiler sample one base sample two is a single id both are not treated as different ids so suppose if I write class here and I just change it now if I go back to a site see it changed right so that is one difference between them let's just put let's just leave it okay then second point uh, which would be here would be each page can have only one element with that id okay now this is like you can have like that okay let me just show you what i am talking about let's just do it here okay hashtag sample 2 uh let's remove this part let's say id okay okay if i go back to the website both are converted right but here what we said each page can have only one element with that id but this is like a practice for us like this is a good practice for us i mean you should give only one id to one element okay it's not like you cannot use it multiple times you can but it was made for such a purpose all right okay i hope you understood that and what else is the difference obviously id uses hashtag okay now if i talk about classes classes you know you can use same class on multiple elements that is in the practice we use dot in the class and you can use multiple classes on a single element not like this and classes are like there is a rule for writing class uh let me just say you cannot have a class name with a space in it because if you give a space con uh, compiler would think that both are different classes which we just saw it here right okay so that was another example and uh, well, i guess that was all the difference between ids and classes like these three differences are there and one of this difference is there okay and i'm again telling you this line each page can have only one element with that id it is not a rule it is basically a practice which is used by most of the developers and you should follow the same okay so i guess that was all for this video hello everyone and Welcome you all to another video of our web developer series. So for the past few videos we have been talking about you know CSS, we talked about the introduction to it, we talked about the selectors, we talked about the anatomy and few other stuff, right? If I just go live, this is what our website looks like. I mean we talked about different things here, right? So that is there so in this video or like 
I should say from this video onwards, we'll be working on um, website, uh, personal website basically. I mean, it's not going to be a simple uh, CV website which we made there because like it was a very basic one, right? I mean, if someone sees it, they won't find it very attractive or anything like that, right? So that is there. Now let's go back to here and let's see what exactly we are going to make. So this is one of the websites which I personally liked very much. So this guy name is Sean Helpin. Alright, this is his website. And you can see this cover page, it looks uh, really nice here. Like, see, this is written here. Right. Um, and you can see there are like other stuff. Like, it's a very neat website, right? There are different stuff here and there as well. So, yeah. All in all, there are many stuff which is available here. Okay. So, in this video, we are like try to imitate this website and make it our own. All right. So, before we do that, uh, I want you to uh, do few things for me. I'll just clear my sheets here. Okay. First thing is. Just give me a minute. Okay, this is not working. I don't remember then. So let's go back here. Let's see how to add comments in HTML. Okay. So this is the way. All right. So first step is. Uh, Create a new folder and write as my personal page. Okay. Then I want you to create an index.html. Okay. Then add boilerplate a title your name whatever it is uh, create uh, style.css and link both of them and add a blue background color so this is your task okay try and do it Okay, so pause this video and try to do whatever the steps I told you. Alright, so here I'll go with my um, explanation. We'll add the boilerplate. I mean, this, this, and this is already done with me. So I'll just start from here. I have added the boilerplate. I'll just add the title. So my name is Shimon. So I'll just do that. I'll just save it. And then what? I have already like uh, created this style.css as well, so you just do it on your own. And then you have to basically link them. So just link and href style.css. Now here, simply write body, background color as blue, save it. Okay. Okay, my bad. Yeah. Okay, so this just shows that we have successfully um, created uh, sheets and link them. All right. 
Now, now another thing I want to talk to you guys is um, before going deep into you know making the site, there is something I want to talk about is favicons. So you can see here at the Sean's site, he got a little icon right here, right? Um, so how to do that? So what you have to do is just write favicon io right uh, let's just go here let's have the text as s right that works so this is what it should uh, you know look like all right uh, i will simply go and click on download so just show in folder um, let's just try to open this one okay looks well if I open this one okay then what is this one exactly all right so what I'll do I'll just simply cut this I'll just go to the web dev folder and I'll just paste it here I'll just save it okay now what I'll do I'll go here here what I'm going to do I'll just simply click on link this time link is not relative style sheet it's icon and it is this right let's save it let's go here and you can see we got that beautiful icon right there with the name so you can have different things i mean you can go here you can add some emojis text png or something all right so that works now there is another thing uh, that this uh, might not work on some of the cases so what you have to do here is just change the relationship to favicon save it okay I mean see this would not work for me but it would work for you then all right and here what you have to do okay you might be wondering what is all this stuff so I would not go into detail over these things all right this is about basically the caching system which I don't uh, think is necessary for you to learn in this course so yeah here we go back and back now there's another thing you might see on Sean's website is that it has got you know different divisions like see this division is a different thing then it got different divisions here and there and everything the positionings and everything which I don't think so we have talked about right so in the next video we are going to talk about um, how to you know add these divisions to which we can style differently and add different blocks in our code all right so many more to come uh, in the next video so thank you for thank you for watching this video and see you later and i welcome you all to another video of our web development series so uh, in the previous video we learned that uh, we are going to make a new project uh, on the CSS uh, along with it we learn a uh, few concepts as well alright so if I do one thing if I go live <coughs> we will see what exactly have we done till now so till now uh, we have you know basically made our uh, boilerplate and styling sheet and link them and to uh, you know check uh, the linking if it is right or not we have added a blue color uh, right here okay so for now i'll just remove this blue color okay something happened okay yeah. Okay, so now I'll just, you know, simply uh, remove this. Alright. 
so it is like this and then again one more thing was we have added an icon which is the favicon which you can see right here okay cool now let's do one thing let's try and implement this thing like whatever it is written here so you can see that this is an h1 and this is a <coughs> paragraph so let's let's do the same thing here h1 um sure then let's write a paragraph tag a programmer right okay so hmm okay uh as you can see here and if you see here both are kind of different right i mean in this side it looks like the both are enclosed inside a box and if we see r it looks like they are very different right so what is different here exactly so let's just let's click on inspect and see okay this is basically an image but uh, if you can see there's something called div okay now you might be wondering what <coughs> div is exactly right so we will just go div mdm okay so div basically stands for content division element all right now it div element is the generic container for flow content okay so it has basically no effect on the content or layout until styled in some way okay it might be a little confusing for you but let me tell you what div exactly do so if i want to club these two together what i use i use a div so div basically helps us to you know divide our content into separate containers so that we can affect the layout of each of the containers differently all right so what i can do here is i can write div all right and i can simply paste it here now if you see not much of a difference you might be wondering oh what is this right but let me tell you uh the son the mdn docs if it is open yeah it is open that it has no effect until in some way css is applied here so we need to apply a css right <coughs> now before we talk about the css part i want to mention a few things right here uh, that would be that when we think of a div div basically spans from this corner to this corner and its height is equal to whatever the content is inside that thing all right that is a very important point which i wanted to mention in front of you because in the future videos we'll talk about span and then you'll see what is the difference between span and a div all right okay so let's try and give a very nice background color to our text okay so before that we'll just simply go to color picker uh, css okay okay it's not like this it was i don't remember exactly uh what the site's name was okay but it had a very nice one let's let's try color palette picker for html okay let's see
Okay, I remember it was colorant, right? Okay, okay. Uh, these are the basic, uh, you know, um, very nice color palettes which we can use. Uh, okay, let's go with this one, right? So I'll simply copy this color, copy. I'll simply come here. I'll simply say class equal to details, right? Whoops. And here I say details. And here I can say background color as okay. Yeah. See. Okay, this color is uh, <coughs> not very visible. So I think I'm gonna choose this color maybe. And sorry guys, I'm coughing uh, a little bit. I'm actually a little bit down with cold. Not anything as serious, but yeah. Okay, I've changed the color. And yeah, this looks uh, far better, right? I mean, this is visible color. Like that was a nice color, but it was not visible on the white background. But anyways, uh, let's uh, let's continue. Okay, so this is uh, the thing. Now, if you look closely, you might see that there's a gap here. And there's a gap here, and there's a gap here as well. What is this gap exactly? I mean. Uh, I have only used div, nothing above it, nothing to the left, nothing to the right, why it is so? This is because our web browsers have their <coughs> own styling. So they, I mean, if I go to not page source, sorry for that. I want to get, uh, go to inspect, clean again, let's try to inspect this. Hmm. I'm not able to find it right now. Okay. But never mind, you can see there, there is a gap. How to reduce it? So this is a very nice trick which I'm going to tell you. So, let me do it carefully. Alright. You don't have to do anything. Simply, uh, right body. And here, have the margin as 0 and then have h1 and here margin top as 0 save it let's see how ok everything looks perfect right yeah then there is line content to Center, let's see if it works. I don't know much of it doesn't. Center content of div. Let's see how we do that. So it's text line. Let's see center. Let's see if it works now. Okay, this is a start. I mean, this looks nice to me at least. I don't know about you guys, but this looks nice to me. Uh, we have done a lot of things till now. And in the last video, we talked about the uh, div element. Uh, this. Okay. Then we see our website. It looks something like this. Pretty nice, I'd say. And then we go to this website. This is what we're trying to make. Okay. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about box model. Okay. Now you might be wondering what is a box model, right? So uh, let's go to website. Let's try to inspect. Fully box model should come. All right. So.
Uh, yeah. Okay, everything okay, good. This is what is called a box model. Okay, so in HTML, every element has its own box, right? Suppose this is div, this has its own box. If I write a paragraph tag, it would have its own box, all right? So a box basically has three main attributes. One is padding, one is the border, and one is margin. All right. So one by one, uh, we are going to talk about each of those boxes, and then uh, we'll try to you know uh, do something on our own to see how we see it. All right. <laughs> if it makes sense to you. Okay. So first we'll talk about the border. Okay. Let's come here. Let's see what we can have. Uh, okay, we'll draw it. We'll draw it. Suppose this is my box. This is my div element. Okay. Now this div element uh would have some border right if i go here it would have some border right now what would it look like suppose this there has some border like this okay anything in closing it is called its border okay I hope it was a bit clear to you. I really do. Okay. Now let's try and implement it. Let's see how it would look. If you see it, you would get it uh, in a more better way. Understand more better way. You know, I order right solid and then we say order. Let's suppose 10 pixels. Okay. I don't remember if it had a color. Okay, I have a color as well. Let's add the color as this. Works. Let's go to our side. I'm going to save it here. Save it here, right? Hmm. Okay, why can't we see the border here? Okay, since that covers the whole part, let's have a height of 200 pixels for now and a width of 200 pixels. Now let's see. Okay, we got it. Um, yeah. Now let's do one thing. Let's see the background color to black. Okay, okay. So the color was I mean the color was actually equal to the background color right now. So that's why you couldn't see it. But this is the background, I mean the border you're talking about. It is of 10 pixels and its color is black. All right, as it all, and you can see the same thing is happening here. Okay, cool. Now, the other thing which we'll talk about is uh, padding. So, suppose there is some content written inside a box. So, the distance between the content and the box edges mean this edge. Or this edge, or this edge, or this edge. It is called padding. Okay. It is called padding. So, what uh, 
we are going to do is uh, we are going to um, have a padding here of let's say 20 pixels that would uh, work I guess uh, let's just have a padding here of 20 pixel let's save it um, if I go in, uh, you can see that there is a padding around it I mean this is the content and this is the padding okay now oh, you might be wondering okay there is not much of a change here what is the difference right that is what you might be wondering okay so let's just try to remove the value for now let's save it now let's see okay i can i see i mean i guess you might be getting different than there's no padding there's no low padding so if I simply add the padding, the little pixel, right, and there we go. Going by 200, and then we got a 20 padding from the box. Then we got a border. And the only thing that is left is, uh, we need to talk about is uh, margin. So, margin is. Uh, basically a buffer zone okay it is basically you know uh, the distance between the current element and any other element that is on our screen so suppose okay there is this box as well let's call it dev box only and the distance between them that is called the margin okay so I hope uh, this was clear to you okay <coughs> hmm. no okay so I told you about margin. Now there is one task which I would like to give you. Um, okay. So first thing you have to do is make one more container with uh, height and with as 200 pixel only okay then the second point would be uh give it a uh, red color that works the third thing would be change first i mean uh, assign class to put the devs then try adding margin or if you can't uh, we'll add it but for now that is all you have to do okay so yeah i'm going to have okay uh, we can just change it to let's say first container So we have another div and here we will have the class as second container and let's save it. Um, let's change it to let's go to the website to see if it's working. If it is working, it is working. Hmm. Now let's add Second container 
we have height as 20 pixels we have width as 20 pixels what else uh background color we'll have your Okay, let's run through it. Let's see how website looks now. Mm, okay. Now, one more thing. I don't know if you might uh, seen it or not, but this is a 20 pixel box. This is a 20 pixel box. Where is the difference? Like, why am I getting a uh, so much height difference? <coughs> oh, sorry. We'll talk about it. So if I talk about this box, uh, yeah, if I talk about this box, it's initial inside the content and everything that is 200 pixel. But because of the padding, which is you know 20, 20, 200 plus 20, that is 240. And if I talked about the border, that would be 10, 10, 260. So that makes it greater than i mean it's because see the box size isn't compromised when we add the padding or when we add the border all right even when we add the margin the box size is not compromised okay so please keep that in mind okay great so okay next thing we had to do was just introduce margin here margin so now let's keep it 10 bits. Yes. Hmm, then see the ball bottom mark and the 10 bits from all of the sides. This, 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 this. We have separate margins as well. Um I then have a margin of just the bottom of 10 bits. Let's save it. See it got a 10 bits margin from here. Now, if I put a margin on top of 10 pixels there as well, so the whole difference between them becomes 20 pixels. Okay, so this was the box model uh, we had to talk about where we basically had three main things padding, model, and margin. So far we have learned a lot of things, right? Let's just go live and see. Uh, okay, okay, uh, my bad. Let's just close this. Um, let's just go back here. Stop this for a while, go to HTML, and then we go live. Yep. Okay, cool. So we have like developed kind of few things, right? So far, okay, cool. Uh, now the question arises uh, exactly that our site is not looking like the Sean's site, right? I mean, the site looks something like this, which uh, clearly doesn't. So, okay, we'll uh, try and do a few things here. To make our website look something like this let's go to style okay in the first container what I want is just remove the border width and border color for now okay then we have text align background color okay rest all the things are fine okay something is still there which we don't want uh, width is there let's move the width let's let's have the padding let's move the margin let's move the margin from here as well let's save it let's remove the solid border also let's save it okay um, kind of works right I mean I can have the width okay let's not have the width right now okay cool okay now uh, one thing i want to show you is uh, this is my development project in the image i have two images 
uh, one is cloud okay looks like this and one is mountain which looks like this you can download your own images from the net all right like the way i did it all right uh now i get back to here uh what i want here is i'll go to simple html um in the this part um, i have this r2 uh, sentences and below this sentence i want an image tag okay source would be images Okay, nothing like this. What is this? Images slash. Uh, let's have the cloud one. Let's save it. We'll have cloud image. Okay. And uh, similar thing we'll uh, have here as well. Okay. and then below this uh, we'll have same mountains and we'll save it and we'll say mountain image for now okay okay works let's see how it looks uh definitely not the one we are looking for uh what is wrong here exactly um let's just remove the height as well now let's see okay okay <sighs> and another thing which we can have here is uh sorry yeah here is let's remove the text line to center as well okay okay let's save it Hmm. Just give me a minute. Okay, this this looks uh, nice, right? I mean, we have the images, not looking nice. Okay, it's looking very house posh. Now you might be wondering why. One thing is, um, which I don't know is bugging to you, but it is bugging to me is, I have this cloud here, and then I have the sentences. But here I have the cloud, and addition to it is the mountain image. So what is these? What is this thing exactly? What is the difference here? Okay. So the dis, uh, I mean, uh, difference is because of the display. Okay. Let's now go and try to read the display. So display is a CSS property which sits within an element is treated as block or inline. Okay. And the layout is used for. Okay, that is something different. But what you should be know is how it is treated block or inline. Let's just click here, block or inline. Uh, okay, they don't have it here. I'll just tell you what is a block and what is an inline. Okay, suppose here I write h1, hello world. H1. Okay. Now, if I have the color as red, I mean it is world here, and it should be like a background color. here you can see that this i mean the text is here but it is taking the whole this thing right so what is this called so this is basically called a block element which you know blocks the whole uh, area not just the text all right similar thing is the paragraph tag as well para let's just say and uh, we'll just close it with this okay 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 then uh, i have the para tag as well 
background color let's say blue okay so you can see the block elements you know blocking the whole uh, area right so that is one of the displays called block okay another of the display is called a uh, span uh, sorry another of the display is called inline and example of inline could be a span okay now i'm wondering what is a span so let's just try writing span okay I mean yeah i'll simply write hello world again and i'll just close this span okay and i'll just have this thing i'll have the background color copied from here only and i'll just paste it okay great work right i mean uh, you can see that a uh, span is an uh, like if we write span and if we try to format it it is not you know uh, encapsulating the whole block it is only encapsulating the uh, content written inside it so this type of uh, display is called inline display okay great 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 now you might be thinking like okay span is working fine then why do we need a block display elements i mean what is the need there so need is there i mean suppose i want the width not to be changed i said 100 pixel not working right but suppose i want the width here to be 100 pixel it has 100 pixel width right so that is the thing here okay now you might be wondering okay everything is working fine everything is cool all is good but the thing which is bugging me is if i want to use the powers of both um, block and line what can i do so css gives us the ability to adjust our display okay i just simply write display and i can write inline see cool trick right so this brings me to the third type of uh, display which is in line lock here you can adjust the height let's say 100 pixel see so this gives you the advantage of both the uh, cases all right so this is how you can see that how elements are you know adjusted in our um, web page using uh, css okay uh, the box model contributes to it the display contributes to it and a few other things which uh, we'll talk about it so i hope you learned something in this video about um, the display the block display inline display and inline block display and one more uh, very uh, what should i say informative uh, uh tag which is the span tag all right so i guess that was all for this video and in the previous video we learned about um <coughs> uh elements of like block elements and inline elements and how we can you know change the position okay and uh, what else uh we talked about the positioning as i mentioned uh all right and and did we talk about anything else no that was it okay so in this video we are going to talk uh, more about how you know uh, we position the element exactly okay so but before we do so the first thing we have to realize is that even without css our html element has some positioning uh, by default okay and we have to understand how things you know get positioned by default before we can go and change it to bend the rules okay so the first rule is uh, that content is everything okay suppose 
here I have a let's say I have a div uh, hello and here I have a span okay and if I write the div Let's say this, and I have this span. Let's say okay. Take So we can see that okay in div. In span, the content is like this. Okay, it just encapsulates the whole content. In the div also, like it's fine that the it has the whole block like this, but the height is in accordance to the element only. So that's why the first rule is that uh, content is everything. All right. The second rule I would say is children sit on parents. Okay. Now I'm wondering what I mean by that exactly. So suppose I just remove the hello from here, okay, and here I have height say 100 pixel, and let's say with 100 pixel as well for now. Okay, and if I have this span inside this div, so div is a parent and span would be the child. Alright, so you can see that our span or our child sits on the parent. Alright, so that is what children sit on the parents mean. So these are the basic two rules of positioning. Okay. Now uh, we can also you know set CSS property like other than the position wala thing okay uh, I mean other than this position wala thing um, like the default position thing we can also set a CSS property which is the position property in order to position elements on okay so basically there are two position properties static and relative so let's talk about the static so okay we have talked about the static one because this default HTML uh, thing I mean positioning of how 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 this would be positioned how this would be positioned how this would be positioned is um, simple static um, all right and if I talk about the relative one uh, relative positioning is uh, basically how uh, you would you know a position or element relative to how absolute it was okay I don't know if it made sense to you but let's try something and then you would be able to I guess uh, would be able to get it what I'm trying to say here so okay I'm giving you a task make three divs of uh, a square div of 100 bits 100 by 100 and give them colors of red blue and yellow okay pause the video and do it okay. meanwhile I'm gonna do it let's say the class is red okay Okay, this works right now. Let's just okay. 
Now let's have the blue one. Uh, let's do something. Let's just copy this thing. And let's just paste it. Uh, change the color to blue. Okay. And let's have. Let's paste it. Change the color to yellow. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now suppose I change the position to um sorry position to relative. Okay. And now I put the top to twenty pixel. You see this element should be here according to the its static position. But since it is the relative position, it would you know shift 20 pixels downward from the top uh, with reference to the absolute position. And uh, one of the major thing is that other elements would still be at their absolute position. So if I simply just say 100 pixel if it would you know come down here and the other element would uh, just you know uh, vanish okay so this is all that we had to talk about the positioning absolute and fixed and how default positioning is done by html okay so far in the couple of previous videos we learned about the uh, positioning of uh, elements in our uh, website right uh, we learned about inline elements we learned about block elements we learned about inline block elements we learned about the fixed position and the absolute position and uh, the relative position all right so let's do one thing let's go live here and try to see what we have achieved so far okay okay let's remove this red box i don't know why it is still there okay let's see now let's see uh, okay cool. so this is what our website uh, looks like currently okay now uh, one thing which i think we can have is all we can have all these elements towards the center right that is one of the bare minimum so to do that we have text align as i told you which we can have in the body and it's a center let's see how it looks hmm okay great now one thing i want to uh, tell you is if we inspect it um yeah you can see that uh, all the text uh, which are aligned or I mean see if this is a cloud okay let's have it I mean other than the image all the things which are aligned like this so these are basically the uh, block element all right like they have the full block like this right the whole inline thing right suppose uh, I change the width to 10% now what will happen see as soon as it gets a block it becomes a block element um, yeah as soon as it becomes a block element the text line uh, don't work on it so what is like what can we do here what we can do here is we can have the margin top would be zero uh, right would be auto bottom would be zero and left would be auto as well okay now if you check it uh, this is how you center all right so this was all uh, about you know centering how we center an element so these two are the main methods by which we can center the element all right all right so i'll just um, remove it from here for now uh, i'll have margin top uh, zero let's say back to what 
we had okay great now another thing which you might be noticing is that this mountain is not lying in the center because of um, this cloud right um this cloud basically is like a hindrance right so we have to you know remove this uh cloud from the html flow so when i uh, remember how we take an element out of the html flow by changing one particular css property and yeah that is of course a position property that we are going to change all right um uh, now let's try to see uh what we can change here exactly okay let's do one thing uh this is the cloud um i'll give it a class called bottom cloud okay uh let's move this is bold and i will say bottom cloud and simply i have the position absolute why there is no difference here okay okay okay, okay. i understood mm. this is our first container so let's have the uh, position here as relative okay and let's have the uh, left as what Not this one. Let's see. Okay. Um, bottom be fifty pixels. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure why this thing is not working. Uh, like. Uh, um let's see let's see let's see there is uh, probably something which uh, we are missing um what can it be what is that uh, one thing uh, which we are missing mm, let us check the name if it is correct it's bottom cloud okay i mean one of the most silly mistake but okay okay i mean uh, <laughs> it is uh, something not one thing you want but it is something but this is because we don't we should not be having what we should not be having uh suppose i just say 10 pixels what difference would it bring let's see okay let's say 300 pixels and okay and left may i'll say 300 pixel okay i mean see first of all uh, see the mountain it is in the center right so yeah okay let's have it 400 pixels looks pretty nice right so my next challenge will be to have let's make it 400 as well let's see how it would look i mean it depends all on you okay not 400 400 will look nice let's say 350 now let's see let's see okay i mean for me it works I mean I can have it to 330 okay that works for me that works really fine for me okay now I want you I want to give you guys a challenge to move this 
uh, I'm legit forgetting the words right now. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, move this cloud to somewhere here. Okay. Let's have some padding over here, I would say. Right. Uh, first container. Let's have some padding on top. Let's say 100 pixels. Let's see. Work. Oh, okay. it's not working. Let's check. Let's see. Inspect. Let's see why it's not working. This is my cloud. I should be having some padding here. Let's get the whole dev. Okay. Why am I having some padding? Hmm. Okay, we'll talk about the padding thing later, but um, I'm glad like you understood and just try to uh, move this from here to here somewhere. Hmm. So what 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 we can do is uh, we can have class as um, Okay. What about the class? We can't have class there, obviously. Top cloud. Um, we we'll have the position again as absolute. Um, what we can have more would be let's have top as day pixels right and right as let's say 10 pixel for now let's see how it looks okay okay this mountain is a little bit far so we should be having this mountain as a bit far as well so let's have the left as 300 pixel as well. Works. Okay. So now you guys tell me how it looks. I mean, for me, it looks pretty nice. Right. A little bit. Um, what is this? Uh, it's right. Sean. Okay. It's looking a little bit like this. Right. So okay that's a good start now the next video we would be trying to change the uh, font here because because of it the positioning changes sometimes which we'll see all about in the next video hello everyone and i welcome you all to another video of our web development series and in the last video we learned about the what i call the dark art of centering elements using css all right we did it uh, using two methods and we learned about um, what we say uh, absolute positioning as well and if i go live this is what my website looks like it looks pretty neat to me at least all right so i mean i'll give that to me that this looks nice okay great uh now what i would be want to talk about is these texts right uh which i already talked about how to i mean uh, i am going to uh, talk about them uh, right so yeah let's let's uh just start with it all right hmm great okay now there are basically two font families one is serif and one is sans serif 
The difference between serif and sans serif is these tiny legs which are present in the serif but not present in the sans serif. Okay. Now let's just try with the example. Let's say a font family. There are kind of I mean a lot. But uh main are uh, sans serif. Let's see how it looks. Okay, where's my website? Okay, it's there. So we'll see. There are no little legs here and there, so there is that. Then we have serif. Let's see how it looks. See the little legs. Okay, then what else we have? We have monospace, right? I mean, monospace has uh, every uh, letter has, you know, specific, like equal gap between them. Then uh, there is cursive as well. Let's see. I mean, it looks a bit terrible, right? And there is one fantasy as well, if I remember correctly. Okay, this looks really bad. So these are the basic font families. Then um, we talked about sans serif and serif. So sans serif and serif has basically like these are font families. So there are different fonts present in them, right? So uh, let me show you something. Let's say font family. I'll do say uh, sans serif for now. Let's see how it looks. It looks like this. Okay. Then there is uh, Verdana. Which is under the sans serif only, and it looks something like this. Okay, so okay, one more thing is uh, you are seeing all these things, right? Like you might be wondering, okay, what the hell is this, right? Uh, so suppose I just type the sans serif, right? Okay. So you might be a little bit uh, shocked to know, but I mean, the first time when I learned about it, I was sure. Okay, so this is basically uh, all these fonts may or may not be present on someone's computer. I mean, uh, see, it's not present on my computer. I mean, uh, this sign is present on my computer, but there is a high possibility that this might not be present on yours. All right, then what would happen? Uh, your system would uh, look for this. If not, it would look for this. If not, it would look for this. And if not, sans serif is, I mean, it is by default there. So this is, you know, a safe play by first is like being very specific and the last being very general. Okay, so there is that. Hmm, that is all we had to talk about the font family. Now, another very pretty thing which I want to talk to you guys is, I mean, suppose you are a person who is very specific and wants that whatever font you are seeing on your screen should be visible to the other person as well. So, how to do that? Okay. So, I would recommend you to go to fonts.google uh, okay fonts.google.com let's see oh, not not this one I don't know where it go exactly. It was here. So, uh, let's see. 
Yeah, let's make a variable alternator. Let's go to font option. I don't want to learn that right now. Hmm, I'm not able to find it. Where did it go exactly? Let's try. Uh, I'm not sure where we are going wrong. Let's check. Okay, it has been there. What? What? What was I even doing here? Okay, fonts.google.com. Uh, you can search it from there. Uh, great, great, great. Now something I want is let's say Meriwether. I want this one. All right, I'll just simply go here. Uh, the regular one. Okay. And let's just make that right now. Okay, we have something. Then let's have uh, another one which I like. I like it as my personal favorite, Sacramento. Okay. Mm. I have it already, but let's select it for now. I don't know what I'm going to say. Maybe maybe it's there. What else? Yeah, we don't have a Sacramento. I have it in Sacramento there. Okay. Let's just get back to here. Now let's write um sacrament. Okay, I got it. What I was doing there. Just never mind me. Let's just select the regular. Okay. Yeah. Do. And do I need something else? Um. Let's have more that as well. Um, select. What is that? And select. Okay, this is all select. Let's have the four hundred. And let's see what are the family we got. We got the family. Now the simple thing is just copy this link. Okay. Let's go to your HTML and just paste it. That is it. Now suppose for the body I want uh Mary Vigo. I simply copy it. And I will simply uh, paste it. And here I'll do what? I'll have the Sacramento and just copy it and I'll just paste it. Then for H2, which I don't have currently, but I will have it in future and H3. I'll have the font family as Montserrat. Um let's just paste it and here also let's just paste it. That's it. Now if I go to my website, hmm, okay, this looks uh, pretty decent to me, right? This is the Sacramento one, this is the normal, uh, many other, right? So that was all, uh, I had to talk about the font, all right? I hope you liked this video, you learned a lot through this, and I hope you apply this in your project as well. So far, uh, we have learned a lot of things, right? And I mean, we learned basics of CSS, then we learned advanced, or I would say intermediate CSS as such. 
which included a lot of things okay centering the dev, difference between dev and span and how to uh, style a text okay so in order to you know style a text or to change the text property and you know to explore more ways of styling the text we have to have more content on our website okay uh if we go live right now this is what our website looks like but we need more content here all right so what to do okay so i have something for you um, let's just close it yeah okay i have something for you uh i have this subcode file all right uh i'll put the description in the uh, <coughs> oh, sorry i'll put the link of this thing in the description and you can download it from there so we do one thing we open it and what we are going to do here this contains something like middle container and okay whatever it contains what you do you just uh, copy it and below the first container just paste it okay so yeah that is what you have to do and let's just save it and let's see what our website looks like okay hmm. now you are going to report on this right so this is some text which we have here okay where we put in information of ourselves and i'll tell you what we'll put but first of all let's try and understand what is like everything written here so in the middle container what we have we have a profile you can add your image here or any image you want and then we have a hello and then we have this lorem ipsum tool or something something now so it is a very appropriate time to tell you what it means let's just write lorem ipsum and it's taking a bit okay and i don't know why it is taking such so much time well, let's do one thing let's go to settings and let's change change the search engine to google okay and now let's okay it hasn't changed why let's see let's go to settings and okay search engine is google why is it not changing it hmm. <clears throat> uh, let's see let's go to search engine let's go to google okay it has let's just type lorem and there you have something close it and close it from here and let's go live Okay, and we are back and here you can see what is Lorem Ipsum. It is it's a dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry. Okay, so <coughs> what happens basically is when you design a website, um, you know that you would have be having some content over here. Like you would be having some content over here, some content over here, some content over here. Uh, but what exactly? You don't know at that time. So to have a so you have dummy content uh, over like as a placeholder and later you can you know just uh, modify it. So Lorem is that dummy uh, dummy uh, content on the placeholder, all right. So that is there, all right. Uh, now let's 
let's do one thing let's try and add some photos here i mean there is a very famous website called flat icons where you can get vector images okay and there are like hundreds of icons just go on view all and you can see like there are hundreds and hundreds of icons present here and you can choose any one of them so suppose i go with avatar job description avatar looks fine i go over here what i do um let's pick this photo and uh, let's just uh, download the png it has downloaded right uh, okay go in the folder uh, what we'll do is um, copy it you go to our page in the menu folder you just uh, place it okay looks great now what you'll do we'll come back here in the middle container in this you can have images this is my png and let's save it let's see how the site looks now okay i mean uh we won't be needing this big of a picture so we'll uh, style it a bit let's just say class circles for now okay we go to our style and here i have a circle okay and i have the border radius as 50 uh, percent all right now if i see the website hmm, let's say 100 percent now let's see okay okay it was circles right It has got a round figure, but not much of a round. So let's say, okay, uh, let's have the width as 100 pixels and height as 100 pixels as well. Now let's see how it looks. Hmm, looks nice, right? And uh, instead of this, uh, you can have uh, any other image you can find on the flat icon and you can just simply paste it i mean just copy the image here okay great similarly um, we have skills section as well okay and have a skills photo here like let's say i go back here and I say skills. The thing I said, which I'm liking, I'll just simply say coding. And, hmm. and I'm liking this one. Okay, this is not something I would be needing. I have to do something from here so let's say i choose this one looks fine i'll just download it what i'll do i'll go in the folder okay show my folder uh, i just cut it and
I just paste it over here. And I'll save it. And I'll um, close it. Now here, what I have, uh, here I have the both uh, images, file extension, and the class. I'll say circles. I'll save it. Now let's see what it looks like. I mean, it looks amazing to me at least. You have some other picture over here, like whatever you want, but uh, for now, I'll have the same one. Okay. And great. Now, okay, looks amazing. And then the last container, uh, we have a contact me form type where you can mail to wherever you want. Let me just uh, type in my mail ID. Okay. Then in the bottom container, you can have different links. And here you can have a name and surname as a copyright thing. Let me just put in my name. Now if I go back to my website, this is what we have got so far. I mean we can increase a bit over here. Let's say 200. Save it. Let's say hmm. great. This site looks amazing, right? Now this is me, so I would put my photo over here, you can have a photo here, you can give a full introduction over here. For now I have just the dummy text because I'm just showing it to you, right? Then again, same text over here, something, 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 something here. Then get in touch, something, 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 then contact me, mail. Your social profiles, uh, URL you can have. And then your copyright photo. So we have got a lot of content over our screen now, which uh, we'll format or you know, change the properties in the upcoming video. And in the previous video, we uh, copied a code from the subcode file, which I uh, I told you in the previous uh, video. Okay, now if I click on go live. Uh, we can see that we have got something here. Like we have got the content. Now we can try and uh, talk about them. All right. Now one thing I want to talk about you guys is font size. Okay. Suppose I want this thing to be the created. Suppose. Okay, I mean I want it to be more greater than everything, like more greater than the H1 standard size, <clears throat> so that like it is the ultimate heading thing. All right. So what, for that, what we'll do, what we'll do is uh, we'll go here. In the H1, I'm going to have font size 90 pixel. I can top let's say 50 pixel. Hmm, great. It looks a lot bigger than everything. And if I say zero only press me and I come back here. So it looks a lot nicer, right? Great. But uh we have like mentioned it in pixel but there is one another um, I mean dimension em before talking about em let us see like what is like why don't we use pixel suppose I go to settings I go to appearance and in the font size which is the medium which is recommended I click on large now if I come here 
uh, you notice okay let's do it very large great so one thing you might have noticed is size of this text has not been changed but size of this text size of this text everything has changed yeah, suppose i click on the medium now you can see that yeah size has changed but here the size is not changed why is that because when we uh, declare a font size and pixel we have like fixed that thing okay, like that is a static value to have it in and dynamic we use em okay so let me tell you what is em first so em okay em is like um sound of m so in uh, previous uh, time one em was equal to width and size of m okay but in the modern days uh, one em is equal to 16 pixel okay so this is the thing now if i change this part suppose i want it to be an em 90 pixel what i'll do i'll divide 90 by 16 which would come roughly to 5.625 em okay so that same size okay great everything looks good now another property i want to talk about um em is um if suppose i have a font size here but font size is a basically you no know, derived value suppose here in the body i have a font size of 2 em <coughs> and here i have so h1 is inside body so h1 parent is body right if i have a font size in the body and if i have a font size in h1 this font size would become equal to 5.625 plus this two okay so if i go here you can see okay it looks very very right if i want the same size what i'll do i'll do 3.65 oh, all right but there is not a very you know like this is small code so you can see uh, check whose parents have got what size but in big codes it is very hard to debug this thing so in order to have this value to be on its own and not to be derived we use something called rem okay r stands for root so if i put this value great so rem basically means that it is not uh, gonna add the uh, font size present in the body uh, i mean in the parent part all right great so i guess we talked about the font size here and uh, this was one of the most uh, important and crucial parts we should be knowing between different pixel em and rem all right so okay and so far um, let's look at the website which we have created uh it looks something like this well it looks nice right oh, great okay something um i want to have here is um in the body let's remove this it's looking too big with that right now if i go here okay. yeah it looks much smaller than better okay great now i would like to in this video uh, try and um have our skills in some nice way okay i mean to format it in a nice way so for formatting uh, one thing i would like to have is let's have the inspect 
okay and in the classroom you can see that we have two devs for two different uh, skill sets right both have the name of skill row great hmm now since it is like having the whole 50 per, i mean 100 percent width i wanted to change the width to 50 percent okay this is a first challenge pause the video and try it okay now if i talk about if i want to try what i'll do is i will go on skill row make sure it matches the name here okay and here you can have width as 50% save it and see how it looks okay <clears throat> now if inspect hold there you can see it is of 50% and this 50% is left great now another thing which I want is to Cent but center these jigs in the middle so for that we learned about the margin let's say auto let's save it and it is in the margin i mean it is in the center but i'm not liking this part or this space i need to have some space here so try and add 100 uh, pixel margin on top and bottom and leave the left and right to uh, auto so pause the video and try it so if i have to do it what i'll do i'll write 100 pixel and if i go clockwise it would be right so auto and then again bottom would be 100 pixel and then again left margin would be auto if i just save it how would it look Hmm, I got some margin here and here, so it looks pretty nice. Now, another thing uh, which I want from you guys is to have this uh, text in the left part, not in the center part. So, here we have the text align the center, but here I want to have the text align as left. For that, you know, you can simply write text align left, and what it would do, it would override the text align which is here. So if I look at it, it looks something like this. Okay, great. Now, now what else? What else is I am um, you can see that there's no much space here, right? So what to do on this thing? Like I want to have some space here. So what we can have here is we can have uh line height of 2 okay, you will see the difference see there is a, some light, uh, line height difference and it looks uh, pretty better than before ok and, and then what else ok one thing I didn't tell you in the previous video you can use these stickers which you use on whatsapp uh, they can be used here as well go to jiffy and click on be animated and here you can write code okay and let's just click on the green and click on the stickers part let's see what stickers we can get from here the site is a bit slow Hmm. If I click on skills, let's see what it shows me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't know why, but the images are uh, not opening. Okay but um okay they are not opening at all i don't know what the problem is okay we'll see it see it at the end of the video 
we'll see if this request get loaded we'll try and inculcate it otherwise we will go with this image good so far we have uh, formatted our skills set a bit but i want to do one thing which would look totally cool but it is not right now which is i want to wrap these texts around him okay and then i should be here and these texts should wrap it or somewhere around here how to achieve that so for that let me just reduce it to let's say 25 percent okay and here also let's do 25 percent I don't know. I mean, obviously, we cannot change it, but let's see. Hmm, looks nice. Hmm. So, for that, what we do is we learn about a um, new concept called float. Okay. Just go float CSS property and see what it is exactly. So float property specifies whether an element should float left, right or not at all. Alright, so absolutely position elements ignore the float property. So rather than uh, seeing, I mean learning the theory, let's go for the uh, learning it in practical. So suppose I write float and I say left. And if I save it, that's how you float day. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we don't have a silicone here. Why? That's why we had a problem. Now, if you will go and look, okay not looking very great i would say Let's see why is that okay with okay, this image also have the class circle so that's why we are facing that problem let's move the float for now now see it's back okay okay uh, pretty much not what we need Getting the correct stickers here, I would say. Let's just say I coding there. We'll let it work on its own. If we come back here, what we'll do, we'll have some other class here. Let's say skill image. And here also, I'm going to have skill image. Okay. And if I go here, what I'll do, I'll have skill image. Okay. I'll have these two things. And then I'm going to have float left. Okay. Oh, let's do one thing. I'll have skill image one and skill image two here. I'll tell you why I am doing this. Let's have it on. Let's save it. Let's see. So this is what I was talking about. See, these all texts are um, wrapping this text around. Okay, but I see that there is no gap here. So how to have a gap here? So what we can do? We can simply have a, a margin from the left of hundred pixel. Okay, not from left, from right. Great. Now see. Hmm. Looks nice, right? Now, uh, another like, new challenge for you would be to have this part to something similar like this, but this image should come here and the text should be somewhere here. We get an image, alright. So okay, cool. So can you do that for me? 
try it so what you can do is you can just skip leave your skill image to you can have these things okay and in the float you can have right okay and margin from the right should be 50 pixel now let's see great okay how awesome does this look right the my skill section is looking something like this and another parts coming here right two years only looks really great right and one more thing which we can have is we can have this color on all of the parts that would look great right okay we want something how about this suppose i just copied it i just came here and from here if i paste it and if i save it let's see did we get it great doesn't it look wonderful right you can have some other image on the second part as well uh what say what say what say i mean this looks nice let's just copy this oh don't tell me we have to wait again but okay we can wait and by the end of this lecture i mean two or three minutes and we can get these stickers so let's wait for that time but okay we want to have this color here so what we'll do we'll check what the color was the color was this we'll simply copy it and put it in the background hmm. looks nice to me at least and i hope you guys also like it great hmm now the image hmm. i get very confused when i see so many images but yeah we can have this one and if i try to paste it here it would look good i mean it's not looking very nice over here right so let's move that image let's have some other image Oh, we can do one thing we can have the border radius as let's say 60 percent and uh, let's save it and let's see it now yeah looking much better okay so so far i mean i'm liking what we have done and we learned about the float and we learned about you know the stickers which we can use great we learned about the float property as well so yeah, I mean that was it which I wanted you guys to know here. Alright, and one thing which we can have is uh, between the here we can have HR tag. Okay. Great and okay i'm not getting okay let's see what hr thickness how we can have it. hr thickness yes is we go to start workflow check and then height as one pixel let's say chart and let's save it let's see okay nothing much happened so 
let's try and just copy this part let's see how it would look hmm looks nice no I mean the same lines as you wanted everywhere so we got it great so so far we have almost reached to the end part and it looks amazing to me at least and so far we have created our project all right let's click on go live and see what we have created so far so okay great this is what it looks like right hmm nice now i want to uh, you know i have planned something at this video and uh, next video most probably uh, we'll have you know i'll uh, walk you uh, uh, through this like site or uh, through some styling which i'm going to do and i would highly recommend you to you know follow me along this these two videos we are talking about minute minute changes which we are going to put on our site to look at more presentable than it is right now all right so yeah let's let's try and uh, do this great cool now uh, before i talk about anything um, what i want is uh, right now i want your text color to be a little grayish okay I mean you can see the text color it is a little black but if it is a little grayish that would look cool right so the code for that would be 40514E um, okay I save it I go and I see yeah I mean it's not much of a change but it looks nice all right and then on H1 and H2 I want a little different color you can have any color of your choice but what i am thinking is a little of aqua okay great and on h2 i am thinking of having the same okay on h3 as well mm -hmm. great now if i go back Hmm, looks nice, right? Hmm, great. Uh, what else uh, we can have here is <clears throat> okay. Now um, we got the height and everything. now what i want is to have a gap between uh, these two i mean this gap and you know this gap there's no gap between you know bottom container and middle container middle container and top container so for the gap i'm going to go on the uh, what have i named it here middle container right so i don't think i have any middle container here so i'll just have one middle container it is a steady spending okay that's fine okay let's try and try the middle container we we'll go for margin we want top margin to be 100 pixel we don't want any left margin so it would be auto bottom margin would be 100 pixel and then again auto great now if we go back hmm looks nice right now one more thing I want is uh, <clears throat> here we have class as circle. If I check what is circles, width is fine, but I want to change the height as well. Let's say hundred pixel. Okay, not at all hundred pixel. Let's remove this. Let's have width as hundred pixel height as 100 pixels now let's go and see okay it looks a bit small so let's make it 200 now we go check perfect 
great looking nice right now another thing which i want would be hmm, i mean see this road i it is a single long line it is not looking nice at least not to me so what i am thinking of doing here is like i'll give it a class i'll say intro i'll save it and here i'll have a intro and here i'm going to have width as uh, let's say 40 percent let's save it let's see okay looks well looks better but we want it to be on center so here we'll have the margins as auto and yeah this is how it looks it's nice agreed hmm. great 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 uh what else we can have here is hmm. okay now 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 what else uh, we can have on our website to make it look better like can you think okay we can change this this long line doesn't look nice so for this thing we are going to try something okay there's a standard code so this uh we not remember it but try to understand it okay we are going to have dotted we are going to have uh, thickness as 6 pixel and here we have color which would be gray gray would look nice and i save it if i go it looks something like this it looks not very nice but it is what it is now the border bottom has to be zero because we want only single line or none okay if i go single line i don't want so many dots so i can have width as like four percent that would work okay looks nice and margin here should be 100 pixel from the top 0 pixel uh, auto from the left 100 pixel from the bottom and auto from the right let's save it let's see hmm great looks nice right yes great work great work now okay i'll give you a challenge like this has been made i want you guys to do it exactly what we did here okay so uh, i would like um suggest you guys to try this thing okay mm, uh, this would look nice so try it okay if i go here i check in the bottom what is there as such no class has been assigned to it so we'll assign a class bottom okay and we are going to have dot bottom this is what i have written okay great now this was the code if i copy it and paste it here save it if i go back hmm looks nice right 
but it doesn't have you know uh, I mean because margin is auto that's why I guess the problem is so let's do one thing let's have auto auto 100 pixel auto and let's see it now okay uh, let's have it at 60 hmm. let's have it as 40 Pixel, sorry yeah looking great right now the last thing i want you guys to understand in this video is we have to change this contact me button okay for that we have something css button generator okay if you go to this website you can have your button as your own okay now here I want not click me but I want contact me font is 5 or we can have this font you can choose your own color for me this would look nice it hasn't changed okay font size fine box everything fine border i would like to change it to eight so that it gets a square shape all right and background this works fine hover i don't think so we need anything in the hover part okay so let's just copy this whole code from here okay and then we are going to paste it here simply just paste it now you go to html and you see your um, i mean it has button only so if you go to a website now and see button okay great looks nice right now you can change the color here on your own suppose i want to have the same color which we are having here let's just copy it and let's just try and paste it okay i mean color is different I don't think we can find it, but see, color is different, right? So, yeah, so I mean, we have, I mean, we did a lot of things in this video, okay? We had some high, def I mean, patterns, we have this cute little dots, we made this contact me button, we centered the textures like this, and everything. So yeah, everything looks cool. So I guess that was all for this video at least. And in this and if you remember in the previous video we styled our website a bit. Um uh, let's just pull live for once. And let's see. Okay, uh -huh, my bad. Let's just close this. Let's just go back here, don't show again, let's close there, let's go to HTML and now let's go live. Hmm, okay. Oh, we added the underlines and what else we added this button okay great now one thing which i did was i changed the color of our lower part to simple white and this part as the one which was there previously okay so in this video all we are going to do is we are going to talk about the footer part Going to style the footer part. So, the styling the footer part, one thing uh, that is concerning me is that this button looks little out of place, right? Because of the font. So, what 
can we do simply we can do one thing um style out css we can change the font family here with the font family which we are using for h2 and h3 so we'll just copy this and you know we'll just simply want to paste it we'll save it and now but it looks pretty nice now uh, if we have to format the footer part so it's class and bottom container so we have a bottom container and here uh, i'm going to have my um background color as six um sorry color uh, background color yeah. uh, background color as yeah nice this is the same color which we are using for the uh, font um let me show you yeah here yeah, fonts all right great it looks something like this nice oh so one thing you must put is just that we can see this thing we have some gap why is that already told you that um the pages by themselves sign auto margins so how to cover that exactly we can cover them with padding so let's have a top padding of 50 pixel okay um left padding is zero bottom padding is 20 pixel uh, and left padding is zero we'll save and we'll see looks nice right so it is there now another thing which i want to change is these um anchor tags so what we can do is for the anchor tags let me open yeah okay so for the anchor tags what we can do is we can first of all change the color of the text to let's say one one okay now if we go back you can see it looks nice it is a little same to the color but actually prefer this when using the links all right now you can see that we have these underlines which i don't want so these underlines are as you know already provided by uh, html for the anchor tags so to remove that we can use the text uh, decoration so let's have uh, text decoration of let's say no okay great now uh, there is no gap between them so let's put some gap between them so for gap you know we have to put the margin let's have the top margin as 10 pixel uh, right margin as 20 pixel bottom margin as 10 pixel and left margin as 20 pixel if i go back and look yeah looks looks better right hmm. the only thing left is to have the font family we are going to have this one family only and we will uh, save it now uh, how does it look so yeah okay looks pretty nice right and the only thing which is left is i don't i mean if the user comes on the website he won't be able to recognize that what is this so like to when i hover over it i want something different so for that we already know something which is pseudo class right i hope you remember otherwise you can just go over and watch the videos so we have this thing hover we'll, when we hover over it i want the color to be a bit white a shade of white which is e a f six f six okay now you want to look and you see looks great all right 
and if you go down here or oh, already know what to do right great now the only thing that is left is to have the copyright part uh, format so for that uh, let's just uh, see if we have something okay we don't have any class so let's add a class here let's name as copyright okay and let's have a copyright funny okay now first of all i want the color so i can have the same color as the white one looks pretty neat hmm, looks nice right now i want this text to be reduced okay font size to be reduced let's say 0 0.75 Okay, mm, three fourths of sixteen pixels. It is what twelve pixels, right? So it looks nice, a bit small. And I want it to be at the bottom. So to get it at the bottom, I have to have some padding. So padding would be what? We go over bottom container. The bottom padding is twenty pixels. So we can have the upper padding as 20 pixel as well, then right as 0 pixel, then bottom as 20 pixel, and then 0 pixel. We'll save it and then we'll check. And it looks nice, right? So, well, I guess that was all which we could do in this website. It looks pretty nice to me. We have a nice, you know, starting page. I mean, starting. What did I say? This um, welcome thing. <laughs> Let's just call it a welcome thing. Then we have our intro. You can, you know, obviously format your intro as per yourself. Then we have these uh, tiny, cute um, horizontal loops. Then we have skill part, and then we have contact thing and then we have a link and our copyright so i guess that was all which was to be taught in this video and congratulations your website is completed Add the details add to your github page you can you know show it to the people you want admit it it's cool all these things the stickers and everything it looks cool so from this part, I can proudly say you are done with your intermediate CSS skills. So a pat on your back. And from the next video onwards, we would look into Bootstrap. All right. So I won't get into Bootstrap in this video at all. So from the next video only, we'll talk about Bootstrap. What is Bootstrap and how we would inculcate it in our sites. All right. So, thank you for watching this video and see you later.